the United States Handball Association's four-wall national championships return to the Multnomah Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. Martin Mulkerns is the men's top seed, seeking his first U.S. national title. While Katrina Casey comes in looking to cement her legacy as the greatest women's player ever. After missing the nationals last year, she's back and chasing singles title number six. Meanwhile, Sean Linney has won a record 12 three-wall titles, but is still looking for his first four-wall crown. Champions will rise this weekend at the 71st USHA four-wall national championships. Are at the Moulton Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. And good morning to you, my name is Dave with your players of Hamble alongside Michael Mack. Here for this men's semifinals match, Martin Kearns going up to Shory Reeves. You're on the main show port. Max, you've uh, played against these guys, you watched them this weekend. How's the feel of the tournament and what you've seen? It's great to be back, especially here at the Moulton Hamble, you know, great club. Um, Martin played David Walsh in the quarterfinals, looked very dominant. You know, David had some good rallies, but overall, Martin was too strong, too consistent, and um, had a close match with Sam Esser. A couple of close games, I think 17 and 19, um, but always looked in control and pretty dominant, so should be a good one. You know, we spoke with Martin right after his quarterfinal win over David Walsh yesterday, and he talked about what it uh, he took away from that victory over Shorty Ruiz in the 2021 Nationals in Nashville, Tennessee. This is what Martin had to say. You know, again, I think it was a very tough game in, in Nashville. I think it was a quarterfinal uh, before I played Killian. Um, I did win the match, but again, it was, if I remember correctly, one of those games was maybe 16 or something like that in a, in a tough game. So, look, all these games are the same. You have to you have to play as good as you can in all of them. I respect all the players I'm playing the, with utmost respect, and, and that's what it takes. You go in there, you play as good as you can, and uh, look, I'm just hoping for that I can play as good as I can tomorrow. You know, Shorty Ruiz, uh, he himself remembers that match with Martin uh, quite well, in fact, and uh, he wasn't shy about letting us know what he's looking to do to get that revenge today. It was a decent match. Uh, it was not that, it was it was an okay match, you know, and um, I felt like I could do better, and that's why I wanted to play him again. That's why I tried hard today, so I will get my rematch. Well, yeah, he hit the ball really good. Yes, you know, off shots, you know, he, he makes you think about where the shot's going to be, and then tricks you into some shots, you know, but I'm there with him. And there is Shorty Ruiz, who's uh, now ready here on the show court for the beginning of this matchup. Martin Mulker and Shorty Ruiz, our referee is Jared Bale. And here is we the have announcement. Martin Mulkerins from Galway, Ireland. Number one seed playing Shorty Ruiz. Rolio from Tucson, Arizona, the number five seed. Now you recall Martin Mulkerns just won the Players' Championship in Salt Lake City a couple months back. He's coming off a big win there. I Point. think that has to build your confidence, you know, especially coming in here, getting the one seed. Um, I think he's here to make a statement. One serve, zero. He has a laser serve, does Martin, and who's on display on that first and now the second serve. Another big setup off the back wall, goes down laser. Shorty has a hand on it, but is unable to get the point. Two, serving zero. That's two out of three to 21, breaker to 11. Short ball. We saw Martin peppering these serves serve. when he was warming up earlier. I'm not sure if you caught that, Max, but I saw him hit five Short. straight crack serves, and here he double faults only because I brought it up. The announcer's curse. Zero serves two. Skip. Looks like both players going to maybe a hard power serve to the left with a little bit of reverse, trying to use that glass to their advantage. Side out. This can be appealed here. Side. Both players staying short. exactly where they're at. Disagree. So we have two disagrees. Ball is short. Second serve. Hold it, contact. Well, you knew that ball was going to be called short because mm -hmm. both players stayed exactly where they were at originally instead of switching sides. Beautiful shot by Shorty there. Side out. He has that really cool inside out flick down that right wall. Zero two. He does it outdoor just like he does it indoor. Mm -hmm. It's got everything really, some deception, you know, um, and they almost uses Martin's power against him in a way. Hold it, gonna play it again. I 
was a pretty close one right there. I'm not sure Zero if that two. was completely a hinder or a screen. Skip. Two zero. Kind of an interesting look as you browse down through the semifinal bracket and you see that two guys from Ireland and two from Tucson, Arizona. Respective uh, handball capitals on either side of the pond. And then you look at the women's semifinals and see the exact same thing. Two from Zero Ireland, two. two from Tucson, Arizona. It's a nice uh, testament to kind of maybe the balance and uh, on both sides of the game. Oh. I heard Side it last out. night when watching the Golden State Warriors win the championship last night in the NBA, and I think Two, it was Steph sorry, Curry zero. that said, it might have been Iguodala who said that uh, it was a Warriors Invitational, that <laughs> tournament. <laughs> Right out. And I was kind of thinking that, well, it's really been sort of an Irish invitational in some of Zero these national two. championships. Certainly, yeah. So it is nice to Short see a Tucson, Arizona make a huge appearance in the semifinal. Second serve. They can stake claim to that term. And certainly the Americans are going to – great shot. Incredible gets from Shorty. Certainly the Americans okay. are going to have to work hard, you know, to uh, break the uh, trend of Irish dominance that's come One, with champions two. here. Hold it. Almost a one-wall screen there. Shorty letting the ball go between his legs. One, two. serves one. Nice finish from Shorty. Great footwork to set that Side up. Down. Let that ball drop and one saw serves two. perfect footwork. Martin follows right back. Side out. It was a horrible serve from Shorty, who's one of the best servers on the tour. He is, yeah. Serves one. He's got the ability to hop it both ways, you know, hit it with power. And he left that one up. It's Martin point. seems to be pretty automatic off the back wall today. Mm -hmm. Make no errors with Martin. Three, serves one. Because he's going to punish you. Short. Certainly so consistent and strong, and his offensive game just continues to rise in terms of the pressure Second he puts on you. Shorty needs to execute here. Nice dig. I mean, it was a great shot, but in fairness, Shorty should have put away one, three. that ball two shots Short. earlier. Mm -hmm. He made an incredible get on the back wall. Second serve. But even then, Martin was teeing up on it. Such soft hands, Max. You played them outdoor on the three-wall courts, also indoor. Mm -hmm. 
Well, he possesses such a great mix of uh, three. power and touch, you know. When you're playing him outdoors and there's no back wall, I mean, the ball's coming at you with hop and speed. Um, and then the minute you give him something soft because you're just trying to get that serve back, he'll showcase that soft touch into the corners. And then he goes with an overhand tomahawk right there from the deep court. And that was one of the best shots that you've seen in this tournament. You know the, how hard that is to do from that angle? He was right on the right wall, and he hit it right back down the right wall with an overhand chisel. One of a handful of players, really. And to go for it in a pro-level match, too, is tough. Big setup off the back wall, and the ball hits Shorty on the way by. Those are the type of shots that you just can't have happen mm -hmm. if you're going to win this thing. Unforced errors. Point. Kai kind of a contrast of styles right now. Martin's still going very hard down the walls, uh, working on his strategy, his power. Maybe a little more traditional. Shorty with a lot more of the side front, looking to make Martin move here, run him early in this game. Short. Second serve. That's a tough, tough shot. You know, you can say that that serve that goes down the left wall is probably the Six, toughest on this court, three. but I believe it's that softer one that comes back down off the back wall and down the side wall. Side out. It's not just a black hole and you can't see it. It's just very difficult to, like, relocate the ball. Right. You have to watch it three. completely Six. off the ceiling. And you have to know exactly where that side wall is. And this, this ceiling ball down to the left. Remember in 2004, Dave Chapman was playing on this court. Majority of his serves were lobs down this wall. Side out. Six serves three. And it became an offensive shot for him. It's a point. Martin now at seven to three. Timeout. And a timeout time being out. called by Ruiz. Good call for, from Shorty there to call the timeout. You know, I think uh, really needs to focus on maybe not making the hand airs, maybe trying a couple things too much. Shorty comes in as a number five seed. He's five foot eight, resides in Tucson, Arizona. His home court is a Tucson Racket and Fitness Club. His highest ranking on the Pro Tour, the Icebreaker Outdoor Series of 2021, where he was number two. His best shot, you were talking about it, his tap fly kill. I guess that's, you know, it's one of those things where, is that what you really call it? It's kind I'd of a so. flop shot, mm -hmm. but it is amazing outdoors. His, and he does it great inside. We've seen it already today. Power, unpredictability. His, uh, his shot making is so difficult to play against because you have no clue what he's going to do. I don't think he even knows until he does it. <laughs> And, I, and he's just hard to predict. His fly kill ceiling shots are great. His favorite player, LeBron James, biggest win, three wall, or a three time three wall ball outdoor world championship in Las Vegas. That's Shorty Ruiz. He calls the timeout, he gets the, the press on the bio. Martin just goes over the top on that ball with his left hand. Now at eight to three. Of a point, appeal. That might have been short. Agree with my call. They both saw it good. It's a point. Nine serving three. Point. Now Martin's just cruising here, and it's all because of that. The setup of that great serve. Ten, he's getting such a weak three. return from Ruiz that he's able to do a multitude of things on his first strike, whether it is going to the ceiling to set up another shot or a kill shot off the back, and Shorty skips that off the back wall. But you see, Martin's really doing one of two things here. He's either going back up to the roof on Shorty's Eleven, return or he's putting three. it away. Right, certainly. Twelve 
serving three. This is a 9-0 run from Mal Kearns. Big setup. Side out. What do you make of Martin opting to take that ball with his left hand off the back wall? Yeah, felt like maybe a Short. bit of a in-the-moment decision, you know? Maybe uh, would have had a little serve. better luck with his right hand. Still got a good shot Short. on it, but uh, looked to I think so. leave it up just a bit. Maybe Shorty's Appeal. looking for a bad bounce off the bad glass bounce there. bounce off the wall was my... Martin's wanting to give this serve to Shorty, and Shorty says, nope. I didn't nope. think so. He thought the bad bounce was off the glass in the front 12, wall, serving I three. On that second serve that drove the ball down and created this, the double fall. Right out. And it can happen here. Three, serving 12. Shorty thinks that was short. Appeal. Agree with my call. What? I, I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see it. Second serve. They appealed and the line judges thought it was good, but Shorty said it was short. So did Martin. They overruled the ref. And in fairness to our 50-year-old ref, it is very difficult to see from that standpoint whether this ball is good or, or not good. They're hitting balls so hard on these serves. Certainly. And I mean, bouncing an inch past the line in some cases. Well, your eyes see it about four inches short and when it's actually good and vice versa. But the angle that we're at, we're up in the crow's nest up here. On the side wall, we can see pretty good. And that camera angle helps, too. Seeing good sportsmanship from both players here early. There's a bad bounce off Point. the back wall. Nope, Shorty put his hand up. 6-12. Hmm. Score now seven to twelve. It really should be six. Shorty put his hand up to say it was a bad bounce. I felt like Martin saw that and just took a weak shot. Seven twelve. The point was awarded to Shorty. Beautiful two all. Great power from Martin there. Side out. Twelve seven. That's the type of shot that Paul Brady made a living on. It's a point. If you're a young player and you want to learn 13, seven. how to add points to your game, learn that two-wall pass. And in this case, it wasn't even a pass. Point. It was Second time two wall out, right minute. at the feet of Shorty, and he just couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, it just gets on you so fast, you know, and the height that that ball comes in at, you know, unless you're going to take it really close to the floor, which is a high risk shot. I mean, you almost have to be defensive with it. You can see our number one seed, Martin Mulkerns, six foot tall, but he feels like he's six four. He has long arms. He has a wide stance. Galway, Ireland is where he resides, his home court in Moy Colin. And his highest ranking is number five, although he's felt like a number one for many years. Five seems rather low. He doesn't play in a lot of the tour stops. That was January 2020. He did just win the Players' Championship with the WPH just a couple months back, and he won that. His back wall kill, probably his best shot, but like I said, that two wall pass, I mean, you can't get any better, really, than what he has. His power, his strength, consistency, favorite athlete, Joe Canning, he's a hurler in Ireland. His biggest win, the 2018 All-Irelands. 14, serve seven. You can see he has a couple big wins with the WPH on the tour. Point. One back in 2019 and then earlier this year. 
15, serve seven. And also the consistency that Martin's had in the uh, U.S. Nationals. I mean, he's been to Point. three finals, I believe, and yeah, typically a pretty much a perennial semifinalist. So, Sixteen you know, serves seven. He's looking to get over the snide and, and get back to maybe a championship here. I'm sure he's looking for it, but um, really a testament too to how great he's played over the years. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? <laughs> so point. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's 17, been in three, but it feels like four. Seven. Watch this rally here. Short. Martin does just a little flip right here. You don't Second see Martin serve. dive a lot. He gets to the ground. Shorty just pops it right back to where Martin was at. Just a little skitter off the wall there, yeah. Side Watching out. that in slow motion didn't give it justice. <laughs> it was even more lackadaisical seven, seven, <laughs> in real life. I almost felt like putting my headset down, walking down four flights of stairs, walking into the court and grabbing that ball before Martin got to it. Side out. That's how boring that <laughs> shot was, but it was still exciting. 17 to seven. I think Martin didn't even like the shot, but he'll take seven. it. Whichever gets you one point closer. It's a point. Eighteen, seven. Replay. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Eighteen, seven. Point. Nineteen seven. Short ball. Second serve. Beautiful dig by Shorty there. But Martin just too strong, too in position, and ready to go. Game point. Serve seven. I would say just go. For Side out. Seven serves 20. Short. Second serve. Beautiful left Side hand out. corner kill. Showcasing that strong back wall you love so much. Game point, serve seven. And there it is. The first game, guys. First game, game going five to five Martin Mulkern, 21 to seven. In the first one of the semifinal matchup against Shorty Ruiz. You know, Martin got to the semifinal by defeating the current collegiate champion, David Walsh. Martin talked with us about his young opponent who we possibly could be seeing a lot more of in the years to come. This is what Martin had to say. Today I knew it was going to be a, a much tougher challenge against David Walsh. We've, you know, he won the collegiate nationals here earlier this year. He's been playing very well at tournaments at home in Ireland. And uh, we've actually trained two or three times over the last few weeks at home in preparation for this. So, um, you know, it was a, a tough game there today. And at 12-12 in the second game, I think actually David had a, a miss. He'd probably be disappointed with to go 13-12 up. But, um, you know, luckily... They're the breaks I kind of needed, and um, I, I won 21-12, but I, I don't think it's really a reflection of how tough that uh, second game in particular was. Meanwhile, you know, Shorty came in as the number five seed and got here by blowing out David's brother, Connor Walsh, in his first match. And then he faced the number four seed, Sam Esser, in the quarterfinals. Shorty and Sam both live in Tucson, Arizona, play each other a lot, so it's no surprise that they had two close games. Shorty took the first one 21-18 and held off a late rally from Sam to hold on for a 21-19 win in game number two. Here's a look at that uh, 
well, some of the action from that match. And then we'll take a look at the bracket. And there it is, Martin Mulkerns beat Arthur Syed to start the round of 16 and then got past David Walsh. Shorty over Ruiz in the quarterfinals. But before that, it was Connor Walsh who he had to defeat. Two fairly easy games. And that's what led to this matchup. And you look at the bottom bracket, you have Dermot Nash and Ray Err going up against each other there. And it was Nash who was the victor. And then Sean Linning defeated, well, you. Yes, yes. Still. Uh, and how did that feel? Over. You know, uh, felt like I played well. And Sean was just playing better. His serve was really the difference. And he was hitting some amazing shots. So I'm really excited for that other semifinal coming up after this as well. He said there's only room for one tall guy in this tournament. <laughs> and it's either going to be you or me. <laughs> Battle of the height right there. And he said, it's going to be me. Oh, well, Sean could do that. I mean, you can. You know, we can talk about this later, but because we're in the middle of this match. But Sean Lenning has this strange ability that I haven't seen really any other player do, where he can just go into a clampdown mode in the first six points of a match. Mm -hmm. Or at any time during the match. But the first six points, he just decides, I'm going to close this out. And you wonder, you go, it's two minutes or off, and I've right. already scored zero, and he's got eight. Right. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what yesterday felt like. I mean, I feel like a lot of players try to maybe feel their way into the first couple points, get a, get a feel for what their opponent's going to do. And, I mean, Sean yesterday was willing to come in and just put the pressure on from point one. So it's a bit of an adjustment, but, uh, you know, always good to get that experience, and we'll look forward to playing him again but uh, between him and Nash I mean I think that could be a real scintillating matchup coming up yeah I find that as the matchup of the day and possibly even the tournament I mean the finals no matter who's going to make it to the finals in the men it's going to be intriguing and it's going to be very good but the one that I have circled is this Nash Lenning match and I think everybody's really kind of waiting around for that 12 15 or 12 o'clock start whenever they're scheduled to come on here in the Pacific time zone. Really a match in terms of quality that could be a final itself in some of the uh, other tournaments. So yeah, definitely a marquee one. Well, here it was all Martin Mulkerns who really got all of his points off of doing a couple things. One is that set up from that amazing serve. Right. And then his back wall game was superb. But you saw a lot of unforced errors and errors in general from Shorty Ruiz. And equal with those errors, some pretty good play that got Shorty some points. Mm -hmm. But it seems like Shorty has to work two or three times harder to get his points. And nothing seems to be fluid for him. It's, he's not in the service box. He doesn't seem to have a system. He doesn't get a serve and then first strike. It seems that he has to struggle to get his points. Right. Whereas Martin's getting him his points very, very easy. I think a couple of those, Shorty can Shorty can help himself out and make life a little bit more difficult on Martin. I mean, Shorty's an aggressive player. He loves to shoot the ball. Um, but I don't think he's doing a good enough job hitting quality kill shots or uh, – um, hitting the ball with enough power that it's jamming Martin. Martin's able to set up in the front court right now, so maybe an adjustment he can make when returning serve would be to push Martin back first. This is where Martin is dangerous. Side out. And that's why you see that that back wall shot is really his best shot. Zero, zero. The way he sets up for a ball. A point. Yeah, it just does an incredible job of that quick shuffle, One, turning zero. his hips and driving a lot of power from the legs. It's beautiful to watch. That was a beautiful out. shot right there from Ruiz. Zero one. Point. One, one. You know, Shorty wants to play like Sean Lenning, where he can get some quick points on a serve, but he just hasn't been able to do that today. Mm -hmm. Side out. Great get for Martin. Martin, towel, no. 
Shorty maybe being a little bit too finesse there. 1-1. One, one. The problem with some of those overhand drop shots, it seems sometimes, is as the ball is falling into the wall, it kind of gives your opponent more time to read it. Side you hit out. it any harder, it's going to come back up. Martin one, doesn't one. seem to be fooled by Short. anything he sees here. Whereas you and I can play shorty every single day and still be Short. wondering what the heck is going to be the next shot. Certainly, yeah. I think that comes right with out. the confidence that Martin's one, in one. superb shape and he can kind of overplay and play up front. And that takes away a lot of shorty's tools. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful underhand paddle right there into the corner. Point. I mean, really good shot. 2-1. Beautiful crack serve. Well, that's what Martin was doing in warm ups. 3 1. See, even that shot, wow. he hits it with power. Right. I know that was a, a flub off that side wall, but even if it would have hit the side wall flush, that ball would have eaten up Shorty. Mm -hmm. So much power on that two wall. especially for a player like Shorty who wants to hold that front court any chance he can get. That two wall is just going to keep moving him Five back, one. getting him off balance, opening up more opportunities. Short. Second serve. It's a point. That might be something Martin sticks with right there. Just do that same serve Six again. One. Shorty's going to swing and miss off the side wall. Great dig. Side out. A nice left hand from Shorty there. One six. Side out, need a towel. Not sure if there was a little wrinkle on that Shorty. ball down the middle, but it fooled Shorty. Six to one, game number two. First one going to Martin Mulkerns, 21 to seven. Resuming play. Six one. And it's been methodical. I mean, both games so far. Short. Like you said, Martin capitalizing on one or two things, but it feels like Second this run, serve. you blinked and suddenly we're here. Right. Shorty may be on uh, the precipice of getting a little too far behind here if he's not careful. Shorty needs to get him out and get about three or four points. And this is sort of like what he does. I fully expect it to happen, but That's I, he's just not going to play point. that ceiling game with Martin. Timeout. First timeout. 30 seconds. And a timeout being called here from Shorty Ruiz. Coming you know, Martin back. traveled about 5,000 miles to be here this week. Earlier, he told us why the Nationals are so important to him. Look, it's, it, it, it means a lot. You know, these you know these trips uh, obviously cost us a lot of money to come to them. Um, they cost time into our, you know, in terms of our holidays and things like that would work. So, you know, we wouldn't be here unless it meant a, a lot to us. And, you know, there's obviously, I see Jeremy Nash is after making big effort to be here as well and, and other Irish players. So, look, everyone that's left in it is <laughs> all wants to win. Um, but for me, I suppose, to answer your question, you know, I've been in the final of this three times before. Uh, 2013, 2018, because it was doubled up with the Worlds, and 2019. And then the other two times I've played, I've been in the semi-finals. So, you know, I'm hoping, of course, like everyone else left in it, to go on better to tomorrow and the day after. Well, I kind of answered that. Four times he's been to include this tournament in the finals of the Nationals. And I think it does say a lot. You know, if you're going to travel that great distance, I think Brady told me one time it was 24 hours door to door to get from Ireland to here, to his hotel room. That's a lot of travel time. That is. That's a lot of travel. 
I roll my eyes when the wife asks if I want to go get milk, and it's only nine minutes down the street. <laughs> So if you put that type of dedication in, and you know how the yes, Irish sir. players are, they really, really prepare for this months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You don't come here and just play around during the rallies. No, they're here on a mission. Uh, you know, they will have goals they want to accomplish when they come over, and you know they'll do everything in their power to uh, put themselves in a position to win for sure. Brings a great um, sense of competition, and you know determination right, that play. I think One really feeds eight. into the Nationals. Short. Second serve. Eight one. Great serve by Martin. Point. Nine one. can't miss those. Side out. Finally get a chance to serve and then Nine you make one. these unforced errors. Nine to one, game number two, men's semifinals, upper bracket, number one seed, Martin Side Mulkerns out. against the number five seed, Shorty Ruiz. One nine. Hit him going in, had a chance. One nine. Side out. Nine one. Good to see Shorty grind out a side out there. Yeah, One especially nine. to hang on after that beautiful natural by Martin on his serve. Really fought hard to get that. And you know, Shorty has such a great serve, but we're not seeing any of that greatness yet. I know that he has to get into that server's box to maybe hone in on it. Shorty's also playing in the 35 singles where he's in the finals, and he's had a couple rounds there as well. Nine serves one. In these national championships. And that's just me making an excuse for him. Point. But sometimes the more you play, the less rotation Ten you can get on that one. ball and your hop serves. Yeah, it is fatiguing, and there's a level at the Nationals, too, that's uh, pretty high intensity. Ball was short. Thank you. These aren't your Second average serve. typical weekday practice matches. Every player here is, is fighting hard for every point. Shorty going with that overhand tomahawk. It was successful in the first game, but 11, not here one. in game two. 11 to one. You can certainly feel the frustrations building. You might not see that serve again from Martin. One, 11. I like Martin kind of going to some of these other shots in his arsenal just to test them out. Mm -hmm. I mean, he certainly does respect the game of Shorty, but he's at a point where he can try a couple new things. 11. You might not one. see that overhand serve again from him to the right. He's Short. back to the hard serve again. Second serve. Now we saw an unforced error earlier on this serve. One. 
one, eleven. I thought that might have been Shorty's best serve that I've seen. Eleven, one. Not able to capitalize on the follow-up. Skip. One, eleven. Point. That was a laser. Two, eleven. Short. Second serve. Side out. Looked like Ruiz had the perfect setup for that 11, ball and then two. slid or skipped or s slipped or something over there on the left side. I'm not sure if you were able to see it, but something happened. Yeah, it looks like he lost his Side footing out. there. 2 11. Short. Second serve. Short. It's a second double fault for Ruiz in this match. 11-2. Both of them seem like kind of funky bounces off that front glass. Point. Twelve two. Point. Martin's setting up on the left here. 13, Looks like he's going to go with that Z serve. Instead, he pounds it down the right wall. And then this time he comes back Side with out. the Z. And Shorty puts it away. I don't think he two, mishit 13. that first one. I think he was actually driving that down the right wall. I agree, yeah. That little poke down the right wall from Martin when he's on defense has been pretty effective. Shorty standing up front. 13, two. It's almost like the ball just goes by Shorty before he has a chance to get over there. Mm -hmm. Martin's got so much power inside out. No avoidable. Play it again. Replay. 13-2. Thank you, two Martin. bounces. 2-13. With authority. 13-2. Short. We're in Portland, Oregon at the Multnomah Athletic Club. Second serve. You must love it here, Max. Oh, it's a beautiful club. The city's nice and clean. It, it is, yeah. I always enjoy coming to Portland. And uh, the weather's great. Yeah, the weather is beautiful. It's about 100 degrees right now back in Kansas City. So uh, this has been gorgeous to be able to come here. Now, the locals, they, they just laugh at you when you say the weather's great because uh, it's been cool. raining like historical rains here in Oregon and in Portland, breaking records, but it's a point. sort of a light drizzle out there right now. And you know, when you come from like where you're coming from, 100 degrees, me, 110, 112 mm -hmm. in Tucson, Arizona right now, this rain feels so good. Oh, it's incredible. I guess it's all about perspective. I think if I spent 40 straight days of rains, point. I probably would laugh at me too if I said it was great weather, but. 15. It hasn't been raining in Kansas, and nope. it hasn't been raining in Tucson, so we'll take it. I'm getting to uh, that time of the year in Kansas where everything's yellow and just dry. Point. Yeah. 16. So you come here and see two. all the different shades of green. It's beautiful. And there's no other 
city quite with a feel like Portland. Point 17, two, short. Second serve. Point 18, two. We're at 19 to two here, and it's just a runaway. 19 two. For Martin, 45 minutes, 30 seconds. That's how long this match has been on. Side out. We've seen matches like this go as long as two and a half hours. We're only just now at the 46 minute mark. 219. And Max, you get paid the same no matter what, <laughs> which is the best part. Works out well for me, and I got the best seat in the house, you know? Nineteen, two. Side out. A good return of serve from Ruiz. Who only needs 17 here in this two, inning? 19. That's a good serve. Let's see if it can set up something off the back wall here. He made a quick point. foot adjustment, and he puts that ball down. Another point now for Ruiz, 3-19. 3-19. And that was a good serve. Right. I saw a little wrinkle there that kind of Second serve. may have affected Martin a little bit. Point. And he gets a crack serve here. 4-19. Shorty's feeling Point. it. And you might see a timeout call from Martin. Even though he's up big, he knows what Shorty can do with these. Five, 19. These bursts. Short. That was a huge hop. And that had Second Martin serve. completely fooled, but it was short. Five. Martin will be looking to close it out here. Yeah, he doesn't want to have to sit there and face those serves from Shorty again. I love how when Martin doesn't have the shot, point. he just goes up to the roof and sets it up again. Here's match point. And the first time match he has point. the shot, he goes five. for it and kills it. Right. It's a great system. It's like Martin is Hold a it. combination of Tony Healy and Paul Brady. It's a good mix to have. Match point five. That could be it, and it is. Great game. Martin Mulkerns defeating Shorty Ruiz here 21 to seven, 21 to five, as he advances to the finals of the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships at the Multnomah Athletic Club here in Portland, Oregon. Let's go courtside, inside the court, I should say, with Kara Mack. Kara? Here with Martin, how does it feel heading to the finals? Yeah, great, That's, uh, that was the plan coming over, so thankfully just, um, you know, not dragging it on too long there either, you know, just get in and out as quick as possible. Did taking that win in the Players' Championship give you any momentum coming in? Yeah, definitely, but I think, look, at it's, it's eight weeks ago now or, or the two months around that, so, um, you know, it's probably for everybody it was the last big tournament, so it's, you know, usually there's tournaments quicker than that, so it's hard to know form until you actually are on the court, so I felt a, a bit better today. I had a tough, very tough game with David Walsh yesterday, it was 12-12, and he had a bad miss probably to go 13-12, uh, so, you know, I was delighted to get over that game in a tough one, I think it made me uh, sharper there today. How are you determining what serves to use in this match? <laughs> kind of whichever one works. I suppose my game is kind of the low, hard uh, type um, power 
game, but uh, you know it wasn't working yesterday. Um, you know, just too many shorts and things like that. I don't know—is this court a bit faster than that one or not? But um, you know, the the serves down the left today, I was just focusing on them a bit more. And when they go in, of course, it's tricky with the glass sidewall here. You're, it is tough for a player to, to see that, you know. And how frustrating is that when you go through those moments when things aren't working that typically work for you? What's your mindset kind of coming into the next match? Well, it, it wasn't that it was just that particular serve wasn't working. But you have to, you know, that's that's experience too. You have to adapt, you know, and change the server. If, if something's not working, you can't keep doing it. You have to change. So that's, you know, that's what I did yesterday and today. Even when, you know, I was stuck on three at the beginning of that first game, it was three-three, and I think I might have moved over to a three-wall or a lob serve just to move to six kind of quickly. But sometimes, even within a game like that, you just have to change over for a few minutes. And great job. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Yep, thank you very much, Kara. There he is, our victor, 21 to 7, 21 to 5. Martin Mulkerns is now in the finals of his fourth USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships as he defeats Shorty Ruiz. We're going to take a break. We'll be back in about seven minutes, it looks like, uh, before Dermot Nash and Sean Lenning go up against each other. I don't know if you want to stick around for this or do you have things to do. I'm happy to if you need I'd me. I'd love to have you back. Perfect. We have Max Lane back, back with us here in seven minutes. My name is Dave Vincent with the World Players of Handball for the United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Handball Championships in Portland, Oregon. Stick with us. We'll have more handball right around the corner.
United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Championships return to the Multnomah Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. Martin Mulkerns is the men's top seed seeking his first U.S. national title, while Katrina Casey comes in looking to cement her legacy as the greatest women's player ever. After missing the Nationals last year, she's back and chasing singles title number six. Meanwhile, Sean Linning has won a record 12 three-wall titles, but is still looking for his first four-wall crown. Champions will rise this weekend at the 71st USHA Four Wall National Championships. And here we are on the show court. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Max Lane Mack with the World Players of Handball for the United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Championships at the Multnomah Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. Sean has played Dermot Nash once before in Missoula, Montana. Max, you might remember that. He spoke with Kara about that a little bit earlier. Do you remember the last time you played Dermot? Uh, the only time, I think. Um, I do. That was kind of a ugly slugfest, if I recall. <laughs> yeah, I do. Anything you learned from that match that you're going to be thinking about in this one? Uh, no. I mean, my, my kills are going to have to be low because he's got the... It's one of the few guys that can re-kill the ball, so... That's a little annoying, so I'm going to have to roll him out, I guess, and uh, be wary of his tricky little serve down the right, but um, yeah, try not to think of my opponents too much. I think, you know, Sean nailed that, that, that serve down the right. The fact that he even knows that, that Dermot has it is a big thing. Certainly, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, that's a real great changeup uh, compared to his other serve down the left. It really keeps you on your toes. Well, these guys are about ready to get underway, and our referee will give the announcement here. Our referee is Eric Torres. Okay, we have the second semifinal of the day. Serving first, the number three seed from Clare, Ireland, Dermot Nash. And receiving serve from Shoreline, Washington, the number two seed, Sean Lanning. Dermot Nash is quite possibly the hottest player in handball right now. Coming off that amazing victory, the All Ireland Senior Championships. Hello, Abe. All right, we'll just start it off like this. If there's a little, uh, there's problems. I'll, I'll have someone look for a linesman. Hey, Nick, can you do a line? You gonna watch the game? Zero play zero. We now have a lines judge. I guess that's how they go about it. Short ball. I guess that's crowdsourcing your, your referee. Serve. It's funny that it's, we almost had to go to that line judge on the first serve. <laughs> and it was right in his face, too. Nick probably does have the best seat in the house for calling some of those. So pre-game, Sean Lenning said that Dermot Nash is one of the best guys to re-kill your kill. Zero. So Sean has to hit him exceptionally low, and he gets that side out on a re-kill. Down ball. Sean has rededicated himself to the sport of handball. He's been playing one play zero. anywhere between five and eight times a week. Short ball. He's been training in Tucson, Arizona. He's changed his diet. Short. Second serve. And he specifically targeted this tournament to say, I am going to win this four wall national championship title. I mean, even physically, you know, he looks great. You know, mentally, seemed really motivated two, yesterday. Play zero. He's only playing one way, Max. That's true. He's not playing two ways, which means that he is here to win this thing. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Sean's 
done pretty much everything on Play the that over. handball court since he was 13 years of age. But he has not won a four-wall national championship. He's won 12 three-wall titles, and there's a nice little crack serve on the right wall. Three, play zero. And look at that shot. Four, play zero. Unbelievable from Sean Lenny. No timeout here from Dermott, but that's kind of what I said earlier. Five, Sean play zero. has this thing where he'll go up and get six straight points really quick. He's in his zone. That was a yeah. triple bounce over on that left side wall. Six, play zero. Short ball. We're not even three minutes into the match, and Sean has six points. Second serve. Smart two wall from Dermot there. And you'd say, well, why is Sean overplaying that shot? It's, well, because he knows that Dermot likes to go right back with offense. Zero play six. Round ball. Sean skips that ball in. First point for Nash. Best two out of three to 21. Tiebreaker is actually played to 11. Play six. And that's kind of the style that you can expect from Jeremy. You know, he's going to hold that front court in that beautiful two, Irish whip six. underhand. This four wall show court brought to you by Mortgage Solutions Financial. Six, play two. Our good buddy Nadi Alvarado Jr. and his family's firm down there, Nadi.Alvarado at MortgageSolutions.net. And Sean misses his little dump in in the front court. Two. Hold on. Sean, uh, I think you're bleeding, bro. going to be an equipment or injury timeout here given to Sean as he cleans up this knee of his. He likes to slide down. He doesn't wear a knee brace, but I think he might be putting one on or maybe just putting tape on it. But Sean has this ability when he slides down. And you played against it. And, you know, yep. you saw it. He'll slide down on one knee and he'll scrape up that knee. It's sort of like it's been the same scrape for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know, earlier we were talking to Sean about Dermot, but, you know, Dermot Nash also remembers meeting Sean Lenning in Montana. And uh, this is what he had to say to Kara about Sean Lenning and that matchup from last, from last tournament. Uh, yeah, I played him in Montana in 20... 18, I think, uh, 2018, 2019, 2018, 2017. But um, yeah, it, was, it went tiebreaker. It was like, um, yeah. I remember the score it was like 12, 15, 13. It was like three best 15. But it was, uh, I, I busted my shoulder in the second game, basically. So, or my AC joint, my left hand. So it wasn't really, uh, yeah, it's hard to know, to read too much for me. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it was a good game. And he's probably even in better shape now. He's probably kind of more dedicated to handball. So this is probably be tougher again. So we'll see. Yes, definitely tougher. Sean now in the middle of an injury timeout as he's trying to clean up this right knee of his that's bleeding. And it's not a major injury, but they're not going to have a player come into the court that's going to be bleeding all over the place, so he has to get this cleaned up. You see that Sean's frustrated right now because he can't find something to stop the bleeding. And it's just going to continue to keep doing it. He tried to put tape on it, but he's sweating too much. I always found a sock worked really well. I don't know why, but uh, 
a knee length, or not a knee length, but a regular sock. It's kind of the perfect balance. He put a Band-Aid over it, and now he's putting some tape around it. It's hard to put tape around your leg mm -hmm. when you're playing. Yeah, it kind of tends to grab and feels very uncomfortable. Sean Lenning, six foot two. He is living in Tucson, Arizona, although he's from Shoreline, Washington, just up the street. Tucson Racket Fitness Club. He's been ranked number one. Back when the race for eight first started, Sean had that number one ranking. Off balance kill shot. In fact, every shot is Sean's best shot because he's good at everything. His serve, his offense, power, overhand drives, his favorite athlete, Ricky Henderson. Which totally surprises me that that would be his favorite athlete. 12 time USHA three wall pro singles national champion. And he's looking to make 13 this year. And he's also trying to get number one on the four wall national championship list. And he said that he's going to do it. I mean, he really believes this is his year. Coming in after that injury timeout, Nash will be serving. That's one way to slow down the onslaught from Sean Lenning is to make him die for a ball and scuff up that knee again. I'll be interested to see how Sean's feeling after this. You know, he, he did start off in that 6-0 run, but it looked like Nash was even starting to maybe grind out a few points. So to which player will benefit is a little bit up in the air. Sean taking charge there. Okay, 2-6. That's a crack serve from Nash. Sean unable to get to it. Three, play six. Short ball. There's that sneaky serve to the right. Second serve. Very deceptive. And to me, it looks like Nash is, has almost the same windup. You know, he still approaches it from coming the other way, and then at the last minute, that's what makes it so deceptive. Such a great For six, serve play and change three. up. Hold it, hold it. Yeah, you're right. Maybe we'll six, highlight play three. that serve a little bit more. When Nash gets back in the box, but you just never know when he's going to serve to the right. Mm -hmm. It's hard to bring it up because Second serve. he's got a whole bunch of different things he does in that service box. But like Sean said, it's a sneaky serve, so he just throws it out there and gets you sleeping. Right. Sean stayed in the backcourt there. Didn't even go for that. Three, play six. That was interesting. A little energy management early on here. I saw the ball good. I saw the ball good. It agrees. Point. Scores four, play six. Six, somewhat four. dead in the back court. Are you seeing four. that same wave? A little bit, yeah. I know when I played Sean yesterday, it, it, it felt slower than I thought this court would play. There's an interesting uh, strategy going on here early. Looks like Jeremy wants to extend some rallies, maybe test Sean's fitness here. We'll see how all that off-court preparation serves Sean. Well, I think those in the Linning camp would tell you that that's a good strategy because Sean's okay. in the best shape of his life. 
that's got to give Sean confidence here as we continue on in the first. Seven plays four. Short ball. Sean cranks that ball, but it's short. Second. <laughs> Two bounces. Eight to four. Score is eight, serves four. from Nash. Takes a perfect shot in order to get Sean out. And that ball just rode right down that right wall. Four plays eight. had me totally fooled on the corner kill, but not Dermot. Score is four, serves eight. Perfect. Like how Dermot loads up for that, and it's, he's letting everybody in the building know that that's exactly what he's going for, and he executes perfectly. I saw the ball good. I saw the ball good. Did you see? Did you see the ball good? Yeah. Did you see the serve? Unbelievable. The, the referee is. Tell <laughs> this is unbelievable. We have a line judge that's asked if the serve is good. It's good serve. <laughs> Score is six, serve eight. referee and the line judge need to actually sit down and have a conversation Seven, play eight. about how they're going to call these. We can hear it through our headsets, but I guess the players on the side wall or the line judges can't hear what the referee's saying. And it didn't take long, but Nash caught up to Sean and is now taking the lead. Sean had that nice six to zero lead before Nash scored his first point. Eight, now Nash has nine. scored nine out of the last 10 points. That sort of stereotypical, Sean. It is. There's such a thing as a textbook lending shot. That was it. He has a few of them. That's true. Ten, play nine. I love that fadeaway off balance, right corner kill that he has. That would have also been a textbook yeah. shot yeah. too if he would have made it. You can see the creativity nine, just ten. inherent in everyone. In every one of those shots. Ten serves nine.
serves nine. Short. Got one serve. that ball. few minutes but prior to that it was Sean Linney jumping out to a six to zero lead then Dermot Nash jumped out to a nine to eight lead after a nice comeback Dermot five foot ten resides in Dublin Ireland his home court you can see the graphic I mean you talking to these other players they say his serve is unbelievable but what he does up front with his underhand paddle shots are really kind of what gets the points for him. I mean, he's a great hustler, and we know that he has really good defensive and offensive shots. He seems to be really steady. Kind of reminds me of like an Owen Kennedy, but a left-handed version of Owen. He's a get artist. He has great hands. He's really just one heck of a good player. On and off the court, he's a great guy. Favorite athlete is Roger Federer. His biggest win, the Irish Nationals. He did that twice, but... I mean, Ireland Senior Championships this year. That's might have to put that there. on the list. That might be number one. <laughs> All right, time in. The score is, the score is ten. Nine, serves nine. Nine to ten. Sean Winning serving. Or is it ten to nine? The other way around. Make that eleven to nine. Play that over. Ten nine. Or we'll just play it over. That's one thing I like about Nash's game is that his right hand is not a deficit. No, not at For all. For a guy that's a lefty, he's no slouch with his offhand. He's just as dangerous for sure, and, and he plays as smart as he does with his right as he does with his left, too. Patience by Sean, working there, relying on his power. Side out, 10 serves, 9. Sean really loaded up on that ball. 11, play 9. Look how good that shot is from Dermot. Unbelievable. Dermot was on the run there. Was just barely able to get his hand on the ball and he hit it in the perfect spot. That was a side out. The score is nine, plays 11. Sean was really huffing after that rally. Short ball. Second serve. Beautiful left-handed kill shot, left to front. 
from Dermot Nash. 10, serves 11. This one is exactly what we thought it would be. Max. Oh, absolutely. Really, he's executing. I think he's only missed one of those shots that he's gone for where he dipped it in and then talked to himself as he retreated back to the yeah, they're at 11. returner's area. But other than that, he's made every single one of those left-handed kill shots. And now he's up for the first time in a while, 12 to 11. Great first time, science. yeah, since being up 9 to 8. 12, plays 11. Saw the ball good. I did too. Sean's going to call a timeout here. Timeout. Sean just walks off the court. You're watching the four wall handball national championships in Portland, Oregon at the Multnomah Athletic Club where game number one has Durbin Nash up 13 to 11. Here on the show court, brought to you by Mortgage Solutions Financial. Our good buddy, Nadi Alvarado Jr. Were you playing on the tour when Nadi was on the tour? Did you just kind of I miss? kind of came in after. That's I, too I bad. I definitely remember seeing some videos um, of his time on the WPH tour. And, I mean, incredible matches all the way around. You can contact Nadi at Nadi.Alvarado at MortgageSolutions.net. His mom... Of course, his, his father, greatest player of all time. Naughty was no slouch, soon to be inducted into the USHA Hall of Fame. That's not some type of inside scoop. I just know it's going to happen someday, someday soon. He's built the resume, certainly. I think he was on the tour for 22 years, Nadia Alvarado Jr., and he was in the semifinals or better in every single one of those years. 13-11. That's incredible. Missing out and losing in the quarterfinals only once in a 22-year span. I mean, what else can you say? What a shot. Timeout. And a smart timeout from Sean Lenning, who gets back into the service box. He takes that revolving door just a little different than other players do. Smacks it right in front of Nash. Now he has a little bit more time to think and rest and recoup. This almost looked like it was off the other side wall. Yeah, it's just a strange revolving door shot. You see a lot of the other players follow that ball completely around. It's like Sean went inside out on it. All right, 11 play, 13. Short ball. I thought that was good, but... Second serve. That was close. Sean's crushing the ball right now. He is. I mean... Beautiful pass. It's like somebody said, on the next three shots, I want to see if you can break the ball. Mm -hmm. Right? Didn't well, it seem like he just 13. hit three of the oh, hardest he, balls he's hit in the tournament? I think he's stepping into it, looking to assert himself here and get back on level footing, which he's done quickly. Yeah. Sean's back. And one of the uh, serves that Sean has that we talked about for Dermot having the changeup. Yeah, they're at 13. Sean has that ability to almost change from left to right mid-swing. Same deception, same arm angle. See if he looks to employ that here. Such a smart shot right there from Nash. And that's a difficult shot too with your off hand up over the shoulder. Beautiful flight kill. 13-13. This is the biggest crowd of the tournament so far. Packed into the show court. Short ball. 
I saw the ball short. You both agree. Second serve. We have two line judges <laughs> sitting next to each other. I don't know if I've ever seen that in my life. Usually you have a right side line judge and a left side line judge. Both are on the left side. Sitting next to each other, Max. They're locked now, in on that short line. You're a lawyer. <laughs> and even you look at that and say, what's going on? 13. It's a different configuration, I'll say that, yeah. Smart, very smart strategy from Nash. I see Sean playing up front, kind of overplaying, and Nash changes his shot mid-swing. Scores 16, play 13. Short. That's close. You know, the crowd was really into these points Second from Sean third. Lenning, but now they're pretty quiet. Mm -hmm. Dermott's doing a pretty good job of keeping Sean in the backcourt during this run here. He is. He's been very patient as well, you know, waiting for that shot, and then he just drops in those kills using that sidewall. Another great shot from Nash. He just pokes that ball down that left wall, and it just slides down it. Got one left. Sean asking the referee how many timeouts he has. That's not good. Sean, can I see your gloves, man? I think they're good for now. 17, play 13. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that sneaky serve. And he does that with a reverse. I mean, not only is he head faking you and 18, play 13. lulling you into thinking he's hitting that down the left, but then he goes over the top of it and slices it down the wall. And, and now it's a co complete collapse here for Sean. 19 to 13. Dermott's really imposed his style and, and been the 19, more consistent play player 13. through this game. Sean was once up 11 to 9, once up 6 to 0, and now finds himself down game point. Looks like Sean may be pressing a little bit. 20 for play 13. Short. Nash was on a 19, excuse me, a 20 to 7 run right now. Second serve. 19 to 7 run. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, it's pretty darn close to a 20 to 7 run. Score should be 13 to 20. Twenty play thirteen. It's game. And there it is. Pierman Nash taking game number one. And all that training and all that playing that Sean Lennon has had, Dermot goes in there and is really strong. It shows you why he is arguably the best player on the planet at this moment. Dermot Nash gets 21 first, defeating Sean Lennon. What was the change there? Early Sean came out and seemed like he attacked and did all the right things, sort of like what we talked about in pregame. Sean gets those quick six points and then Dermot scores one and the next thing you know it's Dermot gets a couple, and then Sean has a, a nice run where he's up, you know, eight to two, and then Dermot goes up nine to eight. And I, I think to me it was just resilience, pure, pure resilience from Dermot. You know, um, Sean came out firing on all cylinders. He was in that clampdown mode, but you know, it, it takes a toll on you to play at 110 percent sometimes. And I think Dermot kind of just got enough on it to where he could sneak a couple points back. Sean made a couple of errors uh, kind of late after that 6-0 run. And we had the injury timeout. And that kind of maybe busted a little bit of momentum. And from there, Dermot was uh, just able to push his way back in, claw and fight. And uh, 
Um, so I think it'll be up to Sean here to regroup and, and really push hard in the second game. He's got to find that, that level again. What's really interesting about Sean is that that injury timeout changed everything. Mm -hmm. Because he was really on a roll at that point, and then it, it happened, and he only scored two points after that. And Dermott scored, you know, 15. Right. It, it, very interesting how momentum changes here. You see Sean sitting courtside with just his, you know, his hands holding up his head, looking into a towel like he's just completely, you know, spent. But we know he's not. Yeah, Sean is a Sean's a fighter. You know, we've seen it time and time again. He'll come back, and he knows the strategy within the game. So, um, look to see what adjustments he makes here for game two. You're watching the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships in Portland, Oregon, at the Multnomah Athletic Club. This is the 71st edition of these games. It seems like every Five to ten years they'll hold the championship here as you can look into the facility that we're at right next to those tennis courts on the right hand side beautiful city of portland oregon yeah it's wet sort of drizzly kind of cold dark and gloomy but max and i love it it's perfect always glad to be back Players from Ireland love it too. And Dermot said he feels like that he flew, you know, traveling here 23 hours it took him to get here, and he feels like he's all he did is just go in his backyard. <laughs> he said, This is like Dublin. What's going on? It looks like Dublin. It feels like Dublin. It is Dublin. But it took me 23 hours to get here. <laughs> really green. Very green, yeah. Just some different shades that you don't see anywhere else. Ireland, maybe. I love this tournament here. It's been traveling up to these tournaments since the uh, 80s for me. I, I grew up down the street in Klamath Falls, Oregon. We come up to tournaments here at this athletic club. As a young player, grew up in this court, in this facility. So for me, it's kind of a homecoming in a lot of ways. You know, being born, you know, born in Oregon, living in Oregon for 30 years, and now living in Tucson, Arizona. It's almost like the underneath <laughs> compared right. to uh, Portland. After coming here, it, it took me a while to. I go, oh yeah, yeah, you can wear shorts in this weather. <laughs> a lot of people are all bundled up. Not me. But yeah, Arizona's like the underneath. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just completely different. It's amazing how you can go, you know, south to the other border and just entirely different landscapes and deserts and yeah. Well, Sean's no stranger to these courts as well, even though he lives in Tucson, Arizona, like like I do, but He's from Shoreline, Washington. It has like almost identical type weather patterns here in the Great Pacific Northwest. He's familiar with the surroundings, and he's familiar with the show court. But it looked like Nash was the one that was a little bit more familiar in game number one after he defeated Sean Lenning 21 to 13. So Sean here in game number two, your formula to defeat him, uh, Dermot, would be what? My formula for beating Dermot here is uh, he needs to be aggressive, but I think he needs to be slightly more low risk. Um, we all know Sean can hit some incredible shots, but I think he needs to be willing to, to rally with Dermot here because Dermot's holding that front court. And any time he gets the touch, you know, any time Sean's front court kill isn't perfect, Jeremy's capitalizing, making some great gets, really pushing Sean. But I think Sean's got to be willing to play both sides of the court and push him back a little bit more. Ready? I spoke about Sean knowing these courts well. I mean, I know he has some hometown support. Right, zero serve zero. Maybe he can tap into that if he gets a run going. Yeah. 
That was an interesting shot from Sean. I haven't seen him do that before. Side out. Like a methodical, just sort of floater that went up there, and Nash punishes him for it. Mm -hmm. Zero, zero. Second serve. Sean pulls through that ball. Two play zero. I don't know if you sense it, but Sean's three play zero. Kind of body language Hard. seems to be really down. I would agree. And yeah. I don't see him like being out of shape and breathing hard. It's Second just sort of like he's depressed. Mm -hmm. Very frustrated or something. Yes. There's that inner voice right sometimes that says, you know, you play the same that you played when you Darryl were out of shape me. as you are when you are in shape, and it's kind of defeating, you know, and kind of talk yourself out of, you know, why you're even here. Yeah, I, I think it can certainly be tough if you put in all this effort and all this training and um, things are suddenly not going the way you would hoped. So. Um, Three, play zero. As much as all the training helps and everything, there's still a lot of very determined players and, and focused players that you got to go through. Four, play zero. We're at four to zero here. Oh, I like that shot. Nash is going to, well, never mind. Sean put that in such a good position. Five to zero Five. here. Play zero. There is Sean Lenny. I think a couple shots like that from Sean could get him right back into this. I think spiritually, if anything. Zero, play five. Thank you. You're just not seeing the same fight from Sean that we saw earlier. Five, play zero. Six, play zero. Seven, play zero. Start. You got one serve. One thing you can say about Nash is that he's consistent. He is. Whether Sean's going on one of his barrages or just the shot to shot selections that Dermot has, he's just consistent. If he gets his hand on it, he does the right thing. 
Short ball. That's very smart. I mean, especially in a match like this. Second serve. To be able to hold that level and hold such a consistent high intensity level, it's made a lot of the difference. Seemed like Sean tried to pick it up during that service there, and Nash just finds a way to break him in two every time. Seven, play zero. Make that eight to zero here. Timeout. Where's the timeout? And that's a timeout call here from Sean Lenny. Score is eight zero. You know, Sean is looking for his first four wall national championships, but he has owned the three wall competitions, the outdoor nationals for quite a long time. In fact, when he was a young kid, he was already winning titles, 12 three wall titles for Sean Lenning in the outdoor courts. And now he wants to make history by getting his first four wall title in the pro division. I don't know if you've seen him out there. I guess you have probably have, at the National. I've, He's I've pretty him. remarkable out there. Oh, he is incredible, yeah. I mean, he got his serve going. Uh, it was pretty incredible to watch. I mean, I felt like I didn't have an answer for some of the stuff he was throwing at me. It, it's kind of funny that these guys are, you know, the four-wall players. They don't, you know, if you don't go out and play three-wall and don't understand, Sean Lenning the, is the king. I mean, yeah, he's I'll really the it. best player. You know, Dermot Nash, he respects Sean Lenning on the indoor court, but he's never seen him play outdoor. And he's an outdoor legend in Toledo. Some say the best that's ever played. He's definitely made the case for that. And he holds the all-time record. Right, 12, and he's going to, you know. He's still going. A lot of talk says 15-16 for him. He can't throw a towel up to the referee, but no, I mean, they, they believe Sean could win in upwards of 15 or more. He's still young enough. Great energy from Sean. More balanced. Zero play eight. You didn't show me that you were hindered there. You went for it all the way. I said, you didn't show me that you were hindered there. You went for it all the way. Sean taking this time to kind of chirp at the referee a little bit. The referee saying, you didn't show me that you're hindered. You went for it all the way. But then if Sean doesn't go for it, then the referee's going to say you didn't go for it. It's kind of a weird thing for a player because you kind of, I guess you have to go for it and just kind of grab it. Score is eight, play zero. And kind of stop the play while you're diving for it, I guess is the only way you can really get the hinder off that. Yeah, I, I don't know. don't know what the, the correct tactic hold would it, be Hold there. it, hold it, hold it. No contact there. And that'll probably frustrate Sean a little bit. Eight zero. I've seen a lot of refs allow that type of contact just to get played through. It doesn't really affect the players. I mean, I know certain players would be affected if you're, you know, two feet away from them, but these guys aren't, I don't think, concerned about a, a brush. Zero, play eight. Game number two, eight to zero, Nash up. 
We have two women's semifinal matches coming up after this. Beautiful show. Look at that on the run, backpedaling Nash. About four inches high off the front wall. Nine, play zero. Short. Boy, that's another one of those sneaky ones. Nash is upset with himself for not getting that over the line. That was actually a perfect serve. Second serve. Other than the fact that it didn't make it over the short line. changed here midway through the second game I saw that short he appeals one agrees one disagrees short ball second serve See what Sean could do here. Zero, play 10. See the fans Short. cheering for Sean from the gallery. Second serve. Saying, let's go, Sean. Points now. Now, now. And you can hear it just echoing in here. The fans have <laughs> kind of let all the One, air out of 10. the balloon. Sean can score quick, though, Max. Hold it. He certainly can. Just like in game number one when he scored six points in less than three minutes. One play ten. Beautiful anticipation by Jeremy there. Those are the type of shots that when Sean gets on a ten, roll, play one. it seems like Dermot's able to get Sean out with incredible play. Another inside out underhand scoop from Dermot Nash for the point. Sean just flips that ball back. 11, play one. And for as unorthodox as Sean is from the shot making selection, Dermot's had really incredible anticipation on every one of Sean's ideas today. Exactly what just happened. I mean, Sean had a really good return of serve that would get 99% of all the handball players out of the box, and Dermot dives in and re-kills it. 12, play one. We're at 12 to one. And it seems like every run or any slight momentum change that Sean could put out there, he just can't fight off this great play from Dermot Nash now at 13 to one. Nash asking for if he wanted that to be a screen. Sean's not gonna take it. 13, play one. ball would have been a screen if it didn't clip the side wall like that. Referee looking right down that wall. From our angle, it looks like it's a hinder. And I know Dermot was 13. unable to see that ball for the majority of the flight, but it clipped that side wall. We're at 1 to 14. Is that the score or is it 1 13? Either way, Sean needs a lot of points. Got to give him some more room there, Sean. I don't think the ref needs to say that. I think Sean knew, and that's 13, why he just let him take the shot. He gave him uh, his own avoidable, basically. The ref doesn't need to say anything. This referee and Sean Linning have a history anyway. That I didn't know. Yeah, it's not a good one. 14, play one. Beautiful serve. Now at 
15 to 1 on the writings on the wall. This one was over before time it started out. and the time, time out being called by Dermot Nash. You know, I don't know how long you've been in town here, but uh, you've been in town long enough to be on the court and off the court, Max. Mm -hmm. On the court, you faced John Lenning, and he wasn't playing like this. He was, uh, yeah, he was fully involved, and yeah, I don't know what's gone wrong today for him, but he'll hopefully snap out of it here, but not his best effort in the second game. Dermot Nash got past young Ray Err earlier. Now they're looking to see who's going to go into the finals to face Martin Mulkerns, and right now it's looking like that's going to be Dermot Nash. Certainly Nash has been, I think, the more consistent player here, and and overall, I think stronger just in terms of right, in. rallying and, and his serve has, has been the difference. He's put Sean in a lot of really awkward positions that Sean's had to play really high risk from. We're at 15 to 1 here. Sean should punish this, and he does. Perfect setup for Sean as it comes off that, drifts off that right wall. One play, 15. Sean completely changing. When was the last time you saw Sean go overhand like this? I, I don't think I've ever to seen think. that from Sean in my entire life. Here's a guy that can score four or five points in 45 seconds on crack serves either way when he gets hot, and he went with that serve. I'm just surprised by it. I've never seen that. 15-1. It's almost like a three wall second serve. I think he did want to bring that ball over Dermot's head, being a lefty, or maybe even force Dermot to use his right. Either way, Dermot back 16 play scoring one. points at 16 to one here. See how Dermot's able to flatten out that ball so it doesn't hit the side wall? It's a brilliant serve. It's incredible, yeah. I'd really like, tricky. Play one. I'd like to see him do it more. I mean, just, you don't even need the fake, you know, or sneak it down the right mm -hmm. wall. You can just say, I'm going down the right wall. Here's where it's going. Try to get it back. Like, how could you get it back if you knew where it was coming? I didn't think that was a screen, John. Did you see a screen there? Look like too. I'm still I didn't personally. I know he had to go between the legs, but I wasn't sure if he where the screen was. Now at 19 to 1. And this is going to be over. 19, play 1. In the next couple minutes, it looks like. Is our color commentator is going to go down to the court and catch the winner. One play 19. Point. Two play 19. It's 19 to 2, game number 2. Short. Dearman Nash wins the first one 21 to 13. Second serve. Possible ma match point serves too. Uh, 
And he gets it right there. Just puts a finger on it. Gets it to the front wall. Two inches high. And Nash wins. He's going to the USHA four-wall national handball championship finals tomorrow against Martin Mulkerns. But here he defeats Sean Lenning in two, 21 to 13, 21 to two. Let's go courtside with Max Lane. Mac, Max. Yeah, I'm here with the winner, Jeremy Nash. Jeremy, great playing today. Started off in the first game with Sean getting on a run, but you held your nerve and battled back to win the first. What was the difference for you? Um, yeah, he, he's so talented. Like, he's in, like he kind of started a six-minute run, I think, at the start. And I was just like, just get the ball back, get the ball back, try and get into play because he might cool off, you know what I mean? Isn't that kind of just keep the ball alive, keep working hard, um, and just uh, it would come, you know? Um, and I'd get him out of the middle maybe a bit and he kind of since started to hit a few kind of short serves and stuff and was the kind of serve went away from him. I kind of thought in the rallies, you know, I had the kind of advantage or whatever. So, um, yeah, just delighted to get through and obviously a really tough match now again tomorrow. So. Certainly. Not doing yet. And going into game two, you kept it rolling. You're going to play Martin Mulkerns in the final. Um, what do you expect and what will you be looking to do to impose your style? Um, what am I expecting? I'm expecting the ball to come at me 100 miles an hour. Um, Martin like, hits it so hard and his serve is such a weapon and like, the right hand especially. But um, yeah, like he's in trying, you know, keep him off balance a bit, you know, and not get said as much as he, he tends to do. It's, it's obviously easier said than done, but um, that'll be the game plan. But to see how we execute it, it's probably the, would be the, the question, you know. Sounds great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you, Max. You know, you're in the broadcast booth, you're down on the court, you're doing those interviews, you've been on the court playing handball, you've been around and out in the town. I know this isn't about Max, this is about the, the win of Dermot Nash, but Max had a chance to get out and have some fun this week. We're going to have, of course, more of this, but here's Max Lane Mac, our, our guy, our broadcast partner out on the ice. Had a chance to get out onto the rink. This is Max Lane Mac, the hockey player. A lot of uh, handball players out there didn't realize that Max is uh, a top notch hockey stud. Got to go out and see the sights and sounds of Portland, Oregon, but also hit the rails out there, too. Max had a great time with uh, Shay Lowenstein checking out Portland, Oregon. I was talking about it being cold and wet, and he's out there on the ice working out pre-tournament. Well, we're going to take a break. We have the women's semifinals coming up right around the corner. I want you to stick around for more handball action at the 71st USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships. My name is Dave Vincent with the World Players of Handball. As we want to thank Chris Grad, Linda Manning, Jeff Kastner, Shay Lowenstein, Kara Mack, and Max Lane Mack for the help with this live broadcast. We'll be back in just a bit. Give us about 10 minutes as Katrina Casey, our number one seed, goes up against Michaela Esser next here with the United States Handball Association and World Players of Handball. Stick with us. Thank you. 
Association Four Wall National Championship return to the Multnomah Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. Martin Mulkerns is the men's top seed seeking his first U.S. national title, while Katrina Casey comes in looking to cement her legacy as the greatest women's player ever. After missing the Nationals last year, she's back and chasing singles title number six. Meanwhile, Sean Linning has won a record 12 three-wall titles, but is still looking for his first four-wall crown. Champions will rise this weekend at the 71st USHA four-wall national championships. We're at the Mol there we are, beautiful Multnomah Athletic Club flying high above the city of Portland, Oregon. My name is Dave Vincent alongside Max Lane Mack for this women's semifinal match between Katrina Casey and Michaela Esser. Casey coming in from Ireland, looking for number six. Michaela Esser from Tucson, Arizona is our referee stepping on the court. With both of these pro players to work out who serves first and some of the semantics that go along inside the court here. Katrina Casey, really one of the best players to ever play the game. Certainly. I mean, she doesn't have the same titles that Anna Engel accumulated. And I know Anna's been watching there in Minnesota. But even Anna will agree that. Katrina Casey is on her way, not only stealing a record, taking down those 11, 12 national championships. Katrina is only at about half of those now, but really is cementing herself as one of the all-time greats. In terms of win percentage and race for eight titles, there's, yeah. A total dominance. And if you look back in her career, and one of these times we will go back in time and look at her record, her opponents are scoring zero and two. I mean, it's it's, it's remarkable with, with Pete Brady. <laughs> it really form. is, yeah, where he would hold people to under single digits. And it's kind of funny. Her round of round of eight. I'm just looking it up now on the bracket. Katrina Casey scored 21 and 21, of course, but she her opponents were zero and two. I was just saying that to be sarcastic, and then I look up, and that's the exact score that we had as our referee is now ready to get these players underway. Michaela Esser looks like right, she'll be so serving first. First women's nope. open semifinals we have the number one seeded Katrina Casey facing off against number four seed Michaela Esser of Tucson, Arizona. Katrina won the coin toss and be serving first. Play ball. Zero. Serving zero. And here's that first serve. Zero, serving zero. Set up. Katrina looks to be using that glass as much as Zero, serving zero. Point. Beautiful serve. One, serving zero. And Max, though you're on the men's pro tour, I'm sure you've been on the court and played against Second Katrina. Um, it's sort of like a thing that everyone says, hey, I need to get on the court with her to see. Have you done it? Only once. Uh, I was over in Ireland to play the Irish Point. Collegiates back in 2019, I believe. Uh, Two, serving zero. She was gracious enough to give us a tour of Dublin and, and uh, Croke Park and the old facility. So Point. I've actually played her in 60 by 30. And I can tell you it was one of the most demanding Three, matches I've ever had. We actually ended in a draw because the lights went out at about 16-16, sure. but uh, I don't know. I was feeling pretty fatigued. It was a lot of fun. I'd love yeah. to get a rematch. Second, yeah, she's good at 60 by 30 as well. Incredible player, yeah. I've played her multiple times in, in like real serious <laughs> matches, and she's incredible. Right. Oh, truly. You see a lot of players would come down to the court, and she spent a whole summer in Tucson, Arizona. Four, a lot of players would zero. come down for the novelty factor, saying I wanted to play the best player in the world. Point. And she didn't take it that way. She took it like she was in the Five, World zero. Championship Finals. 
And she just crushed everybody. She always has a, a competitiveness, it seems, at least in these tournaments, that I think serves really well. Uh, you know, she's always consistent and goes about her work. I think that makes it tough for a lot of other women's players to challenge her tournament by tournament. Six, serving zero. Well, not only is she in good shape, but she spent so much time on the handball court as a young kid that everything comes just so second nature for her. Mm -hmm. And you see her right now just crushing the ball. She can hit the ball as hard as anybody. Seven, serving zero. She's got incredible leverage. True. Only weighs about 100 pounds. So where does it all come from? Some great fundamentals. I mean, really steps into the ball well, too. That, up. that was a nice shot there from Michaela Esser. Zero, serving seven. Short. Michaela's a newcomer to the sport of handball in Take a lot serve. of ways. She was a top notch volleyball player. But she has to be such that a out. good athlete in order to make it to the semifinals and to, you know, just even be in the women's open. Seven, serving zero. After probably maybe less than six years of playing. I think so, yeah. She picked the sport up at Missouri State. Um, she was on the handball team when I was there, and, and Sam Esser was there, who she's now married to. Um, but yeah, before that, didn't know what the sport was. Eight, serving Got zero. Got and, and uh, loved it. And she's really, I think, Four. taken her game to new heights since moving to Tucson. She's learning from a lot of Second great players seven. down there. Uh, I think she has kind of some mentorship from Vern Roberts. Um, and I've just noticed a difference in her game. She's really added more offensive shots um, right. and a lot more strategy, which has been really cool to see. Nine, serving zero. Point. Meanwhile, Katrina just keeps rolling at 10 to 0 here in game number one. 10, serving 0. Set up. Beautiful pass. Nice return. Michaela. Yeah, a lot of power there from Michaela. 0, serving 10. And I think that's some of the kind of the new offense. I think in the past, Michaela would have been more content to go to the ceiling. She's got a really great overhand stroke. Announcer's first there to set up. Have her put that one off the back wall. Well, I know we, we will look at the bio a little bit later, but what off the top of your head is is the strong point for Katrina Casey? Is it that back wall shot? I mean, she's got so many good things that she does. I love her ceiling game, but Zero, is it ten. her best shot the back wall? Or? Uh, it's tough to say. I mean, she's really one of those top-notch consummate players who really has every shot. I mean, I'd put her uh, right-handed kill up there. Left-handed corner kill is very good. But, I mean, she plays the two-wall pass game as, as Ten, well as some of those zero. guys like Emmett Pichot. I, mean, I think that's one of the things that makes her tough to beat. And yeah. She's very comfortable and happy to go to the ceiling like this as well. But look at that left hand right there. Are you kidding me? It's incredible. Max, that was incredible. She loads up at 36 feet back. 11, serving zero. She recoils. She recoils with her left hand, snaps it, kills the ball dead center. I mean, she really <laughs> can do it all. Yeah. I would say the fluidity of her left hand, too, is pretty incredible. I mean, like, you see a lot of players have a really Zero, smooth right 11. hand, but maybe a little bit of a hitch or something in the left. Um, there's really no evidence of that with Katrina's game. Set up. I remember we would bring up 11, some zero. of the, the things that Katrina wouldn't do very well in the court. For example, when she was younger, she didn't have a fly kill. It was something that she just didn't, wasn't part of her game. Set up. And we're in the middle of a tournament talking about how Katrina zero, doesn't 11. have this. She's out of the court after first game, listening Short. to it on a live broadcast on a TV that's being broadcast out into the gallery. She hears that she doesn't have a fly kill from you know Second who. Mm -hmm. She goes in there and puts on a fly kill 
exhibition and then tells me later she's never really attempted it before. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's not part of my game. I'd just rather take that ball off the bounce, let it go to the back wall, kill it. But I went in there and, you know, hit 10 in a row. No big deal. True better, better, yeah. Never hit it before, never practiced it, but wanted to show everybody that she had it. I think you really have to uh, enjoy the challenge to, to take that kind of approach. I mean, if you want to achieve these big goals of winning six national titles or something like that, uh, Second, sometimes it's it's the little things too, you know, but got to look at a lot of these things as challenges and, and opportunities to grow. And certainly Katrina's continued to improve her game as she's come along the tour. Point. shots are so good you feel like you what? you feel like you're in this rally with her you find that you're just totally out of breath after the rally ends and 13, then she goes 70, into zero. another 30 shot rally with you every single time she's standing in the servers box when it's over Point. look at that kill shot 14 serving zero between games, I'll make sure she's standing near the monitor and say that she needs to work on learning how to hop the serve. See what she does. <laughs> I'm sure she knows how to do it. What? It's unreal. It is. I mean, she was only a few points away from Time qualifying out. on the men's Time pro out. tour. Yeah, one minute. And I was really trying to encourage her to enter the pro bracket in Salt Lake City because I believe that she had a really good chance of actually qualifying there. How did those matches go when she tried to qualify she, in the men's tour? She did right? well. She scored in the 20s. That was when we'd have one game to 25. Every time that she was in the qualifier final, she made it to where she had 20, at least 20 points. Mm -hmm. So she was five points away from qualifying on the men's pro tour, and it would have been revolutionary. In a lot of ways, it would have made a lot of headlines. And in the times that she was doing it, I, I believe she wasn't as good as she is today. The times that she came close, we're talking about five, six years ago, right before you entered the, the tour. She was close back then. There was a time in New York about four years ago, I believe, that she had her best chance. Michael Galton beat her, actually, in the final, which, you know, yeah. he, obviously he's, Great he's player. a good player. There she is, Katrina Casey. 73 wins, two losses on the professional tour. Now you tell me anybody else in the history of any professional sport that has something like that. I guess in racquetball, maybe Kane might have had a record that was similar. Paul Brady was pretty dominant. Killian Carroll's dominant, but not 72 and two. Nadia Alvarado Sr. had a, had a run that was Pretty damn impressive as well, back when Simple Green ran the Pro Tour. 17, serving zero. You see Naughty's picture on the front wall there. Short. When we're at that camera angle on the right. Second serve. There he is. I saw a poster that was made of Naughty that I believe was at Lowe's Cab back in the 80s that showed that out of 72 18, serving matches, zero. he won 69 of them. Wow. So that's how dominant Katrina is. Hold it. We'll play that again. Play again. So witnessing some history being made here. She's won 70 out of 72. 
18, serving zero. Hey, Nash is pro tour. Right. She's. You should see all the other stuff that she's. Not, that's not part of the tour that mm -hmm. she's winning. 19, serving zero. Oh yeah, certainly heard. Yeah. But a great success over in Ireland. Had great success at the Nationals here. I mean. Point. Look at that kill shot up off the bounce. And here it is, Katrina 20, trying to put another zero. zero on one of her opponents. And she got it. Great Point. crack. And just like that, Katrina okay. Casey. Five minutes. Puts a zero on the Kayla Esser. And, you know, we've talked to Katrina multiple times about zeros. And, you know, she just says, if it were the other way around, I would be, it would be more respectful if they went for the zero. You know, I don't want them to hold back. Here's a nice replay clip. I, I agree with that from what Katrina's saying. She's like, you know, the other way around, I don't want to be patronized. Right. I don't want you to go in there and throw the ball into play to try to get me out, you know. She said, I, did, I feel more that I'd be disrespecting you if I did it the other way. And I went, you know, I agree with that. 21 to 0. Poor Michaela Esser <laughs> getting zero points off of Katrina Casey in game number one of the women's semifinals. The winner will face either Ashley Moeller or Fiona Tolley. You have a doubles match that's going to be played here, so we probably Coming should let you bit. go. Or Yeah, I'll probably sign off after this first game here. Um, well, you never know. The <laughs> second game could be just as quick as the first game. I, I could be back. You never know, yeah. But uh, I'd probably go over there, check in, and get warmed up and, and go that route. So I appreciate you having me on today and hopefully be back tomorrow or if I need needed. to see more of you playing hockey is what I need to see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. It's uh, It took me back. I was uh, working on the slap shot. I think that's going to mm -hmm. be the next thing, but no, it was, it was a lot of fun. There yeah. you are. It's a pretty great clip of you there, Max, and I don't know about you, but I would have that all over social media. Oh, it's yeah, absolutely. No, it was great fun. You know, Jay had a lot of great ideas that uh, we put into action and, and got some great results from it. So, uh, can we see a cross check or? <laughs> Fortunately, it's just a stick and puck. So, so we're right in the middle of the Stanley Cup Finals. Mm -hmm. Who are you picking here? Uh, I think I got to go Avalanche at this point. I mean, I, I wore the jersey, so I'm I'm dead on, 100% uh, committed. They looked pretty good last night, too. How's our goalie doing? Uh, I think he's improving, right? Um, I, I just don't understand this about hockey, is that if you, you're you the best goalie in, in hockey through the regular season, you get into the playoffs and you have one bad quarter and you're on the bench. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Why in hockey? Like, they don't pull you during the regular season, but only during the playoffs. Right. The playoffs are like very different fickle, monsters. Very fickle. Yeah. And, well, it's like, I feel like the um, It's like when NHL. I went out to a nightclub, you know, on a Saturday one time <laughs> and I'm in the dog house they let you it's they let you fair. DJ. yeah <laughs> it is yeah hockey's all about uh you know what's best for the team and uh for some reason when it comes to goalie play it's weird they'll make quick changes real fast whatever they think well is lucky you're on. seven feet tall and don't have to be a goalie that's true yeah. although it seems like a seven footer would be a, a goalie you could just stack the pads lay across the ice and yeah you're like, pretty much good why why wouldn't you have a 400 pounder out there <laughs> <laughs> Just that can't move. I mean, we were, we were talking, yeah, it maybe, maybe game in the system or something. We were talking about that this morning on the ride in, actually. There's a good Geico commercial about it, I think. Well, that's what we need. Anyway, we're going to say goodbye to you. You go play your doubles match. We can talk hockey all day long. I would understand none of it, <laughs> but I still like talking about it. We have game number two coming up. Max Lane Max. Ma Ma Max Lane Max. I like that. That might be the new name. Works for me. Max Lane Mac. Going to say goodbye, and we'll get number two here. With Michaela Esser serving against Katrina Casey. And here's that serve. It's point. There she is, first point for Michaela. And just like that. One, serving zero. Set up. I like that kind of wide corner kill with Katrina on the right wall. 
zero, serving one. Point. You're in a national championship for the sport of handball. One, serving one. Some of these players have played 60 years or more. There's a pro bracket, and then there's the women's pro bracket. Katrina Casey could only be beaten by about Two, serving one. maybe, and this is arguably, 20 people in this whole facility. That's how good she is. Doesn't matter what gender. There's about 20 people here that would beat her, and that's Three, serving one. probably stretching it by 10. She's that good. And that's why I say, enter the men's pro bracket. They play with the exact same ball. And the reason why she's so good is that she is so consistent and she has a game plan. She goes in there, she hits the ceiling shot, she drops it on the back wall. You're gonna Four, have to make an one. incredible shot to get it off that back wall. And if you miss, she punishes you. Side out with either hand, except for that last rally. Michaela serving one to four, one, game two. One serving four. Set up. Coming up after this one is gonna be four, serving one. Fiona Tolley up against Ashley Moeller said it earlier, but in the men's semifinals, it was Ireland versus Tucson, Arizona. In both men's upper and lower brackets, and that was a, a screen, no call. And in the women's semifinals, exact same thing. Ireland versus Tucson in the upper bracket, and Ireland versus Tucson in the lower bracket. Five, serving one. Serving five. Right out. Five, serving one. Kayla finally got the shot that she wanted, and then it's being played over. That was Five, a fun seven, rally. One. Surprised the referee didn't call a bad bounce on that ceiling shot because it clearly slowed the ball down. One, serving five. That ball was supposed to go all the way to the Sorry. back wall and ended up checking at the dotted line. Referee at the end of the rally was looking up at the roof. Second serve. So far in this tournament, Opponents against Katrina Casey have scored a total of four points. That's collective. Two, seven, five. Two to five, and that includes that last point. Short. Second serve. Let out. It's a beautiful pass shot there from Katrina. 
five, serving two. Point. Six, serving two. Point. Time out. First time out. Michaela Esser here during the timeout, being highlighted. Five foot ten. Yes, yeah, she is pretty tall. Tucson, Arizona, Tucson Racket Fitness Club. We talked about that. Her highest ranking, number six, and that's her current ranking on the WPH Women's Indoor Pro Tour. Her left corner ceiling is her best shot. Never heard of that as actually being considered a shot before, but if that's her best one, I guess so. Agility, power, consistency. Favorite athlete is Kerry Walsh, U.S. Olympic volleyball team. She had a pretty big win, 2021 USHA Three Wall Doubles National Championship with Ashley Moeller, who we will see in the next match. That's Michaela Esser. Her husband is Sam Esser, who's also ranked in the top five. Seven, serving two. On the men's pro tour. They're the power couple. What? I asked Sam one time, if you guys played mixed doubles, who would play the left and who would play the right? And Eight, he said, two. you better ask Michaela. I think Point. that pretty much says it all. Nine, serving two. Point. Michaela was acting like she couldn't see that, but I don't know. I'm calling that a point. See if you I'm sure. You want to play it over? Okay, we'll play it one over. Nine, serving two. Katrina's just going to give it to her. Hold it, football. Second serve. I love that serve right there. Katrina electing to take that with her left hand. She dribbles it down that left wall. Another big setup with the left. She had the first one to practice with. The next one, she puts it down. And that's why she's so good. You see how she recoils her little wrist and snaps that ball with her left. It's like a timing mechanism. Perfect shot back there. Another kill shot off the back wall for Katrina. Serving two. One. What can you say? Another big setup, another kill shot for Katrina. Twelve, serving two. She's just remarkable. One. Thirteen, serving two. Kayla got completely mixed up on that back wall shot. 14, serving two. This is a really bright court, and it's bright on the outside. And we bring it up a lot. Of these courts that have two side glass and a, and a back glass, you'd say that it's, you know, it's like a dark 15, black hole two. back here in the corner. But here it's really bright, and it poses other problems see all the colors out in the audience and it's hard you just lose the ball here point 16 serving two Some underhand paddle shot left to front for Katrina Casey. 
wins the first game 21 to 0 here in game 2 it's 17 17 to 2 short second serve Kayla's got a lot of power. It's a point. She just is still trying to develop that back wall 18, game. 18, serving two. Katrina's able just to pop the ball up to the roof with ease, point. and Michaela's unable to get him off the back wall. Doesn't have the same footwork that 19, Katrina does. 19, serving two. Off that back glass. And here it point. is, match point, serves two for Katrina Casey. 20, serving two. Side out. Side out. Two, serving 20. Kayla was serving at two to five at sure. one point, and now you saw 15 straight points for Katrina Second, Casey. She's looking to take game number two and go into the finals again here at the Four Wall Nationals. Looking for number six. Michaela just missed getting her third point. Now 20 to two. 20, serving two. Oh, and she Side just out. misses that one. Two, serving 20. Casey gets game number one, 21 to zero, and here it's 20 to two in game two, and probably the best serve you'll ever see in your Point. entire life. That lob yeah. just trickled down that left wall, hit the back wall, and stayed on the left. Swing and miss from Michaela Esser, and Katrina Casey yeah. wins game number two. That was probably the most incredible serve I've ever seen. Look at this ball go down the wall, one inch from the wall, and stayed less than one inch. And she gets the win, and she will be in the finals. Looking for number six, Katrina Casey wins here at the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships in Portland, Oregon, at the Multnomah Athletic Club, where Fiona Tolley and Ashley Moeller will be warming up to get ready for their bottom bracket semifinal. Who will face Katrina Casey in the finals? We'll find out coming up in about 10 minutes. Stick around for more action with the United States Handball Association, courtesy of the World Players of Handball, here on YouTube Live. Stick around. More coming up.
United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Championships return to the Multnomah Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon. Martin Mulkerns is the men's top seed seeking his first U.S. national title, while Katrina Casey comes in looking to cement her legacy as the greatest women's player ever. After missing the Nationals last year, she's back and chasing singles title number six. Meanwhile, Sean Linning has won a record 12 three-wall titles, but is still looking for his first four-wall crown. Champions will rise this weekend at the 71st USHA four-wall national championships. here at the beautiful Multnomah Athletic Club in Portland, Oregon for the bottom bracket of the women's semifinals where Fiona Tolley slaps hands with Ashley Moeller here. Ashley gets that first serve. My name is Dave Vincent with the United States Handball Association's Four Wall Nationals, courtesy of the World Players of Handball. I want to thank Chris Garad. Jeff Kastner are both directing and engineering this event for the United States Handball Association. Linda Manning, manning the camera. Shay Lowenstein okay, doing some of the behind the scenes work, camera operator. Ashley Moore, the number three seed Kara from Mack. Tucson, Arizona, and Fiona Tully from number two seed from Ross Common, Ireland. Ready to play, ladies. Zero serve zero. A referee made the announcement. Kara Mack not here at the moment. She's our sideline reporter. She has a talk show on TV. She had to go Point. run back to the station and do her show. Interviewing some top-notch Hollywood stars today. One serve zero. And just like that, Ashley scores the first point. Ashley Moeller from Tucson, Arizona. Side out. Fiona Tolley from Ross Commons, Zero Ireland. Serves one. Point. One serves one. Serves one. Point three serves one. Point now four to one. Four serves one for Tolly. Fiona Tolley, our current USHA Collegiate National Champion. Point. Five, one. Side out. One serves five. Side out. Five serves one. Side that was out. a beautiful return of serve from Moeller there. Excellent shot. One serves five. Oh. That 
was a cool shot right there from Ashley Moeller. Just stuck her hand out and just feathered into the left corner. 2-5. Score is two to five. Game number one. Winner faces Katrina Casey, and that's a beautiful serve right there. Fiona's going to have to come in and cut that off if she's going to let it go back in that corner. But Ashley has to replicate it, unable to do so. saw the face. I don't know if you were able to see it on TV, but four serves five. You can see that Fiona was grimacing before that ball even got to her. She knew it was going to be very tough to try to pick that ball off the glass side wall. Side out. Almost psyched herself out before it even got to her. Five four. Five to four is the score here. Point. What was that called? Excuse me? Yeah. Six serves four. Ashley doesn't like it. She thought that the ball was a bad bounce off the front wall. And now she loses another point. That's two straight points here because of a bad communication between Ashley Moeller and the referee. Seven, I think Fiona would have given Ashley that do-over. there from Ashley. Four seven. Point. Now five to seven. Five seven. See if Ashley's able to replicate this. Six, seven. This ball off the back wall here. Fiona's having a lot of trouble picking that up. Side out. Katrina Casey is sitting courtside watching the action here. Seven, six. And I'm sure she's picking up everything from both of these players. Both are having troubles with the ball deep in the left side and back. Eight serves six. Score is eight to six. Side out. Point. Score now nine to nine six. six. And you see both of these players are serving the ball deep into that left corner, which is smart because it's so hard to see back there. Side out. There was a strange ball kind of that checked Six up on that nine. right side wall there. You didn't see it at home, I don't think, but it hit one of the logos and sort of skidded. And that made Fiona kind of stumble when she was hitting her ceiling shot. You saw her legs buckle a little bit. Nine serves six. Nice shot from Ashley. Side out. Six serves nine. Six 
side out. And that's a ball that comes all the way out to the foot fault line, or I should say the short line. line. Serve six. And Ashley's unable to get it even to the front wall because of the side glass. Point. Now 10 to six. Six. Short. Second serve. And a timeout being called from Ashley Moeller here at 11 to six in game number one in the women's semifinals. You know, we caught up with Ashley just before the match and uh, here's what she had to say about facing Fiona Tolley. I really want to cut down on errors. Yesterday when I played, I felt like I just missed the ball a lot and I wasn't hitting good shots and I just felt a little sluggish. So I'm hoping that I'll come out energized and making good shot selection and putting the ball where I want it. She has good kill shots and she has a good serve. So I hope to get good defensive returns on the serve and just not let her kill the ball. Yeah, it's easier said than done when you're playing against a tough opponent, but also you're kind of playing against yourself a little bit on this show court here with the back glass and the side glass and it's so difficult to see the ball correctly. You end up playing against yourself in a lot of ways. Okay, time is in. I think when you play on a court like this, six. your errors are going to just happen. You say you can want to try to cut down on them, but you sort of have to accept some of them here. We're seeing Fiona having troubles as well with balls off the back wall on that left side. So it's not just one, one player that's struggling, it's everybody struggles. Although you have to say that Katrina Casey didn't have any problems taking the ball off the back wall with her left on that deep left side. Side out. That was a nice shot from Ashley Moeller. Back wall. Six serves 11. Hits a kill shot on the right side. Side out. Eleven serves six. Side out. Six serves 11. Side out. Eleven six. This is about the seventh different type of serve we've seen from Fiona. I like that shot though. Point. It's a beautiful shot. 12-6. This can be tough. Ashley Miss hits it. Point. A lot of the players get under this court and they're just so intimidated by that left side wall that they 13, are six. immediately taken out of their game. See, Ashley could have easily have gotten that ball back. And there's another one coming off the side Point. wall. This time she just catches it. 14, six. Side out. Six fourteen. The score is six to fourteen. And game number two, game number one, excuse me. Point. 
And there's the seventh point for Ashley Moore. Seven, 14. Seven. Oh, and that ball hits Fiona, even though Ashley was letting her take it. And that's a side out just off of that alone. 7-14. Both of the players had a little smile and kind of giggle at themselves a little bit. Point. They both have such great personalities. I can see Ashley saying, that's the only way I'm going to get into the service box. There's something Page sarcastic 14. about herself that got Fiona to laugh. Beautiful shot right there. Now. Fiona able to step in and then puts it down. 14 to eight. 14 eight. Here in game one, no footfall called. Although Fiona was over by serve. about four inches. This is gonna be tough. Point. That's a great pass shot from Fiona with her left hand. 15-8. And a timeout's being called here from Ashley Muller. This uh, timeout brought to you by Ashley Muller. Let's take a look at her bio. Five foot seven, Tucson, Arizona, Tucson Racket and Fitness Club. Her highest ranking is number three, and that was this past pro season. Her fist kill is her best shot. Her strength, her fly kills, her fist shots, her court sense. Favorite athlete is David Wright. Was David Wright. I don't know if you want to consider a former baseball player as a current athlete or not, but he played for the New York Mets. She, of course, idolizes the Mets in Major League Baseball. USHA three wall doubles national championship. She's won it three times. USHA Women's Classic. She's won that two times. And she's won so many different tournaments. It's unbelievable. Ashley Moeller is trailing here though to Fiona Time is Holy. 16 serves eight. 16 to eight is the score. <laughs> a little smile there from Moeller. And both players just kind of giggle at each other as they walk by. That was a sloppy eight side out. 16 for Moeller, but she's going to take it. Side out. 16-8. Now, no more smiles after that miss. Beautiful right. shot, off balance, fade away, right to front, kill from Tolley. 17-8. Point. Anything coming off that left wall's been given fits to Ashley Moeller here. 18-8. Nice shot there from Ashley. 
getting her ninth point. It's point nine serves 19. Ashley Moeller, double digits. 10 serves 19. Nice shot. Moeller fadeaway underhand paddle shot for her 11th. 11, 11 serves 19. Should be a screen, no call. Point. And a nice wide corner kill from Moeller. No timeout called here from Fiona. 12, 19. Four straight points and a side out from Ashley Moeller and that ball just side out. comes down off the ceiling onto the side wall and checks straight across the court. Nothing Ashley can do there. She would have had to have read that 19, 12. after it left the hand of Fiona. Nice inside out overhand punch fist from Fiona down the right wall. She gets her 20th point. This is game point. Play a screen on that, sorry. Screen. Referee's playing that over. Couple shots back when Fiona was screened. The referee didn't say anything, but referee's on the right side wall, and this happened on the left side, so it looks more like a screen, I think. And there's a side out. It's a side out, 12 serves 20. Thirteen to twenty. Thirteen twenty. Point. And another point for Ashley. I think she's learning something here about that deep court. She uses the side wall to her 14, advantage. She gets 20. points. serving to take game number one. 20 serves 14. And there it is, Fiona Tolley getting game number one, 21 to 14, nice defeating Ashley Moeller. The winner of this match will go up against Katrina Casey as we take a quick look at Fiona's biographic. Here she is, five foot four, Ross Common, Ireland. Her home court, St. Commons. Her highest ranking is number three. In fact, she's tied with Ashley Moeller currently on the Women's Pro Tour. Her right corner kill is amazing. I, I like the fact that she can change her game in the middle of the game. I consider that a strength, her serve, ceiling shot, back wall game. She has a lot of power. She could play methodical or ground and pound. Katie Taylor, the Irish boxer, is her favorite athlete and her biggest wins, 17 and under worlds, 2018. But you could almost argue that her current collegiate national championship singles and doubles. Seems like she's slamming every time she plays in one of those tournaments. Fiona Tolley. As we take a quick look at 
the Multnomah Athletic Club, where the Portland Timbers play soccer. Or football, depending on what part of the island you're on. Here we are on the show court brought to you by Mortgage Solution Financial. Nadi Alvarado Jr., his mom and father, that's their family owned mortgage company. You can contact them at nadi.alvarado at mortgagesolutions.net. Sponsoring this show court where Nadi Alvarado Sr. has been highlighted throughout his career. 11 national handball championships tied with Paul Brady for the most. There's Naughty. And his son was no slouch. And the best athlete in the whole family is mom. Mortgage Solutions Financial, the sponsor of the show court here in Portland, Oregon at the Multnomah Athletic Club. First game going to Fiona Tolley, she wins 21 to 14. The winner will face Ashley Moeller tomorrow. Excuse me, the winner will face Katrina Casey tomorrow in the women's final. Of course, that winner will face Ashley Moeller in game number two, that winner being Fiona Tolley as she seemed to be cruising for a little bit and then Moeller caught wind. And that wind had a little bit of fire in it. it. Scored some points late in game number one. Score ended up being 21 to 14, but we thought it was gonna be a blowout. But Fiona started rolling some points and was leaving Ashley at about seven or eight points. And then Ashley scored six late points there to get up to 14. So we'll see if Ashley can keep some of that momentum that she had there at end of game number one for game number two. You're watching the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships in Portland, Oregon. This is the 71st USHA National Championships. Earlier today, we saw Katrina Casey get past Michaela Esser. The score there was 21 to zero, 21 to two. And uh, Martin Mulkerns got past Shorty Ruiz in his upper bracket of the men's semifinals. And then the lower bracket went to Dermot Nash as he defeated Sean Lenning in two fairly easy games. So it'll be an all Ireland final tomorrow for the men's as Dermot Nash and Martin Mulkerns once again, two rivals going up against each other. And they're gonna give us something we haven't seen in quite some time. And that's a new national champion. If you think back to the early 2000s, we haven't seen anybody without the name Chapman, Brady, or Carroll winning the men's trophy. And finally, some new names will be etched into that. Or at least one new name will be after tomorrow. Either Mulkerns or Nash. About ready to start game number two, referee with the announcement. Okay, time is in. Fiona's serve, zero serve zero. And very quickly, Ashley gets Fiona out. Zero serve zero. Zero. 
side out. Zero one. Side out. That's a great shot right there from Fiona Tolley. Steps in, hits the front, squelches out on the left side wall. One serve zero. Score now one to zero. That has to hurt. That ball being played over. One serve zero. Nice pickup right there from Fiona. And once again, Fiona having troubles with that ball on that deep. Zero serves one. Left corner. Point. One serves one. Score is one to one as we welcome in Katrina Casey into the booth. Hi, one. Dave. Welcome to Portland. Or oh, as I like to say, to uh, Thank you. Dublin. Well, I like to be welcoming you. I've been here longer than you. <laughs> well, you don't know how long I've been here. <laughs> True. I, I just haven't been at the club. Yeah. But <laughs> Fair. So how's, how has this second game started? It's kind of like the way that game number one was ending when Ashley had that momentum. You saw her kind of pick up a couple things deep in that left court there, and I'm sure that you probably saw that. Yeah, definitely. She put together kind of a string of points mm -hmm. towards the end of that second game, didn't she? Which is always Four good, you know. One to have a bit of momentum and just to find something that works. Well, she's kind of finding it now, and I'm, you see she's up four to one. That's she's nice right. power down the right. Yeah, I think what she's finding here is that either on the right or the left side, deep into the corners, she's... Five, one. She's getting points. Like, you know, just keep Fiona in the very far deepest part of these courts here, because Fiona is dangerous up front. Oh, so dangerous. A lot dangerous. of power. Yeah, power and also then, like, just nice touches as well into the corners and nice paddle kills. So she's got all Side those out. elements. Fiona's actually Confusion giving, there. Yeah, it's funny. Well, Fiona's giving that to Ashley, knowing that it's going to be a hinder or a screen. The referee says no. Yeah, Side I out. don't think Ashley had any <laughs> problems with it either. That might make it. Point. This is a good match. I'll tell you though, Fiona's got a lot of power. I mean, she far. steps into a ball. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, great technique. I don't know if these two have Screen. played before. I don't think I've seen them play before. They didn't play in Houston, right? No, I played Ashley in Houston. Okay, that's in right. The semi-final. That's where I would have thought that it would have happened. And I don't think they played in Salt Lake either. Side out. So that's cool to see. It's nice to yeah. see new matchups. New matchups are good. I'm sure both of the players Five appreciate two. that. But uh, what I did notice is that they were both kind of like uh, very cordial with each other, kind of having a good time in there, which is also nice to see. Second. It doesn't have to be a national championship to see it, but, you know, <laughs> I thought both of them were pretty competitive to a point where they probably wouldn't speak to each other, but they're both giggling back and forth. You see it again Replay on that. Five-two. So they have some type of camaraderie in there. I think they're both struggling with that ball right there deep on the side walls, and I think that yeah, kind of gives tough. them something in common to it chat about. <laughs> Six, two. They both hit each other multiple times. I can times. join in in that conversation. <laughs> You know, what makes it so difficult because, you know, in Salt Lake City, it's a black hole, you know, and but here it's so light. It's like so much brightness. What? Why is it so tough yeah, here? Yeah, I'm not sure. I uh -huh. think Salt Lake might be more difficult, actually. 7-2. Um, 
um, I don't know, there's a lot of activity going around, like, right. on around here, like, because you've got the the three backcourts really close as well, so, like, people are coming and going and obviously mm-hmm. spectating, and it's just a lot going on, like, a lot of movement. Right. It's normally, I suppose, you just have people sitting in the gallery, and that's it. Yeah. Um, um, but I think I think you mentioned it earlier. It's kind of more so when it's coming off the back wall and then tight to the side wall. Yeah, yeah. That's when you can kind of lose it. And I think it's a little bit of like hesitancy not to smash your hand off it as well. That's it's right. Hard to have the awareness like how close you are to it. I, it's almost like this is the one court where you have to play here a lot hey, to try to play. put your body at ease Seven a little bit two. to let your instincts take over and say I know where that left wall is. Yeah. But it's like. When you lose the left wall, you are very tentative. You don't even, it's almost like you're giving up the, the play. Yeah, you're you, just kind of hoping for the best. You're kind of guessing, <laughs> and you don't want to hurt yourself, but. Ooh. Side out. That was close. Muller was up 7-2, to two, and she could have been up 8-2. to two. Yeah, this is a really good start for Ashley. Short. Second serve. Let's. You know, talking about what Ashley has done, it's like she went from ground and pound to I'm going to be a little bit more methodical with my approach, hitting the ball in the deeper courts. Like, that's the shot right there that seems to be giving the players troubles. Yeah, she's a smart player for sure. Side out. And she, like, hits quite unpredictable shots as well. So you really have to stay on your toes. Those punch fist shots. Expect the unexpected. The seven to two, Muller. It's hot in there, by the way. Has anyone else mentioned that, or is it no, just me? no? But I do remember from living in Oregon and coming up here and remembering it being kind of like humid and hot. So there goes the glass panel. Eight serves two. <laughs> it happens here too, right? It has begun. Uh-oh, Tucson has started something. <laughs> Good shot. Right out. Two serves eight. Oh, that was a great shot. Fiona fights that off with a fist. Three eight. You know, I saw in one of the earlier shots that Fiona had, the ball hit the front wall, and she knew it was going to be deep into that left corner with the ball hitting the left side wall, kind of checking up, and she knew it was going to be a tough shot, and you should see her face before the ball got to her. She was was like grimacing, like, oh, no, this is going to be really bad. And I think that kind of sums up how this court is. When you start, like... You start flinching before, <laughs> you're like, oh no, I'm having a... Uh, you're like, here we go. Yeah, here, here it is. <laughs> That's why this court's so hard. It's intimidating, even though the shot itself wasn't hard. Oh. You almost have to just stay positive when you're in there, right? Just say, well, I'm hitting this ball. You can't make a face. 10 serves three. <laughs> no. So, um, Wouldn't that be cool if those serves were allowed? <laughs> yeah, I've heard you say this before. It's an interesting... Well, but only if only if you hit, like, three walls first mm. and then hit that back wall. Because three walls gives you time to kind of figure it out. <laughs> if you go straight front wall, like, 20 feet high off the back wall, you know, that might be a little impossible to <laughs> hit that ball back But as a returner. But if you hit, like, three walls first and then hit the back wall, Would that should be allowed. add a new dimension. Four, ten. So have you been training with Ashley a bit? A little time? bit, just yeah. like once a week. Yeah. That's not really training, but it gives her a different look. Definitely. I saw a little bit of her match yesterday with um, Jennifer Hinman. Point. That looked like a good battle, actually. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's a bit of a marathon. Five, ten. Nope. Two bounces. I actually can't see properly. I'm glad I was given a high chair here, but I'm too short. 
Um, Ashley seemed to think so. Yeah, it was awesome. too bouncing. This is a long rally. Moeller won that twice, and I, I like how she uh, rolled her eyes there. Here's ten serves five. That was a shot. That was a double bounce there. Sometimes it's so borderline; it's really hard to know. Just get a finger to it. Ooh, look at that overhand tomahawk over the top of Fiona. And a timeout being called here from Ashley Moeller. She steps off the court here, maybe to calm herself down after. You know, you don't see them smiling with each other now. I <laughs> know, uh, it's all amicable, I'm sure. And so you come here from Ireland and you travel, it takes 20, like 23 hours to get here. <laughs> and then you open up the door to your hotel and you say, I look like I'm back in Ireland again. Did I, am oh, I? Oh, I know. Isn't the weather almost it identical? It's raining today. And it's, apparently there's the like a the heat wave at home. So that's a double whammy. Oh, you're whammy. missing out. <laughs> How does that feel to like travel all this time and then just feel like you actually just drove to Dublin for the I day? I feel like though this tournament I don't have much time to play with so I'm kind of just in and out and here yeah. to play so I wouldn't have had much time to like go around sightseeing and experiencing the city much anyway so I'll accept it this once but please don't <laughs> let it happen again. Okay time is in. Fiona's <laughs> serving five serving ten. Well I love it because in Tucson it's been 110 degrees. Yeah. So, I wouldn't mind some sunshine now, not going to lie. We got a little bit last night, right when the sun was going down, it peeked through the clouds yeah. here. Yeah. And it was like, oh, there you are. <laughs> it's 8.40 p.m. and it's going to go yeah, down in six so minutes fun. from now. It's definitely a similar climate to Ireland. That's why it's green, I guess. Right. That's the trade-off. Tricky one. Yep, that's Side something out. to put in the memory bank there. Excuse me, that's a point. That's a point. 11-5. Ashley having a good game number two here, 11-5. to five. Nice pass. Every time Ashley has a good serve against Fiona, it seems like she's unable to replicate the exact serve again. There's been some great variety of well, serves, five. actually, in this game. A lot. Both, yeah, we've had some three-wall serves, some lobs, power serves, got it all. Look how far that ball goes over to the right side of the wall from the left. Do you find that the courts are a little slower? Um, no. I didn't. Huh. Not today, anyway. I suppose it depends what you're comparing them with. That's true. Nice. That's, that's a really nice shot from Moeller. That's textbook handball there, really, isn't it? Moeller only scored 14 in game number one. Now she's up 14 to five in game number two. 14 five. She's replicated herself. This is a good lead, but I definitely wouldn't write Fiona. Five serves 14. Be tough. Nice overhand, left handed power from yeah, Moore. Yeah, very assured. You know, when you play outdoor in those three wall courts, you kind of develop that shot. Yeah, right. very true. Side out. Fiona's having troubles with both sides, not just this left side wall. 
14 serves five. There's a lot of writing and advertising on that right wall. That's so weird. There is, and somebody pointed that out to me yesterday, and I was like, I didn't even think about that, but thanks, now I'm aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> now but it's going to bother me. It's like all of the writing is in blue, and it looks, you know, it's kind of confusing in the deep corner because there's a lot of there is a lot little of writing and yeah. going on there. It's like the Nickel Magazine up on the side wall here. And another ball that has fooled Fiona on that left side wall. 15-5. We're at 15-5 to five with Ashley Moeller in the lead, trying to force a tiebreaker. So Ashley was in the national final in 2021, right? Right. In Nashville. Right. So she's looking to make her second final. And she's been in the final multiple times in three five. wall. Yes. Oh, I like that. She hasn't been doing that serve at all, and all of a sudden she just pulled it out. Sometimes when you get that lead, you just your confidence is so big, you can just kind of do things. Things start going your way, yeah. Uh. I like this serve right there. That's a serve that if you can make it a little bit more sharp, maybe undercut the ball a little bit, you can slice that off that deep left wall down the back wall. I don't nice know what shot. Ashley was doing. Yeah, trying to switch it up, I suppose. Down the middle, not necessarily the best place. What you don't want is for Fiona to find something like Ashley found in game number one. It'd be very interesting to hear what Ashley, after the game, if everything goes right for her, if she can pinpoint what it was that she changed because it's it's clear to me that she's hitting the ball to the deep court more but it takes Green. it takes more than that <laughs> it takes more than that to uh, win a match so Let's see fiona upset with herself uh, upset with the call from Replay, the ref 518 nice shot Six eighteen. Nice power. Bit of venom in it. Seven eighteen. You have two left. Okay, timeout. And timeout being called here. Did you say Vienna? What did you say? Venom. Venom. Yeah. Oh, Venom. Okay. I was thinking maybe that the kids back at at school, back home, is this one of their key words for the day? You learn <laughs> the word, you have to put it in a sentence. <laughs> something like that. Thought that was a good Thought maybe word. that was a password or something, some hidden. I wasn't sure what you said, to be honest. But speaking of home, still doing, you're still a teacher. I am. And how are the kids? They're good. They're excited now for summer vacation. Are, are they on it officially? Uh, no, not till next like week. Like a week. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 24th. So I bet you they can't wait. Just around wait. the corner. We're a little bit behind you guys, right? Yeah. I think yeah. you start a month earlier and then you go back a month earlier. Like. Yeah, I heard that someone said that school was over like on the 16th or something of June. So I don't oh, know. Okay. I don't know, though. So that was just a sign I saw as I was driving up. So Fiona is a, like a high school teacher. We would say secondary school. Okay. So they finish earlier. So I they're gotcha. on their summer okay. break. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, no, I've got another week. Can't complain, really. It's kind of tough for the kids, though, when you have this heat wave going through Ireland <laughs> and you have one week of school left. It's like, could this happen, like, next week, please? It's great. Everyone's mood improves, though, when we get a bit of sunshine. Be tough. So they're oh. they're both anticipating well, like picking up good kill shots. 
Yeah, I've seen some really long rallies from both of these two. Fiona's definitely got the momentum now, though. Oh, that was a good shot from Ashley. Yeah, right nice out. overhand. Kind of inside out. She saw that Fiona was pulling away from that right side wall. She goes and pops it right back down that wall. Ashley and Mi Michaela both kind of do that shot. The overhand drive. It's no wonder they spar with each yes. other, right? Yeah. And doubles partners. Ooh. See, Ashley needs to pick that up the second it leaves Fiona's hand. Side out. As soon as Fiona hit that, Nine serves 18. You knew it was going to check on the on the front wall. Check. I mean, you knew, right? I absolutely did not. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. <laughs> Screen. Wow, the referee calls those screens when it's happening on the left wall, but the one that he sees down, he doesn't see that as 10, a screen. 18. He allows that one to go. Ashley he needs to put this away and instead swings and misses. In a way, on that shot right there, you, you almost have to let that ball come to you, right? It's a tricky one, isn't it? 11, 18. If you try to tack it right off that sidewall where you can't see the ball, maybe you let it go. Nice shot. Fiona's starting to catch up here at 12 to 18. 12, 18. Remember, Ashley was up 18 to 5. Side out. Right? I believe it was 18 to 5. Yeah. Seven straight now for Fiona. 18 serves 12. Sometimes the last, well, usually the last one, but in this case, the last three could prove the toughest to get. Nice shot. Oh, wow. You know, if there was a, a little meter that would show up on the monitor here that shows us the percentage 19, of what that oh. your opponent has in order to get that ball back to the front wall. Ashley had about a 2% chance of hitting a kill shot there. <laughs> and she was able to do it. I mean, it was Five that yards. was a tough shot. Yeah. But she did it very, like, confidently. Yeah, that's the scary part. <laughs> Side out. I mean, if they hit those shots and they're flubbing it, then you Both can't really be upset 19. with yourself. But when you snap your hair back and flip it as you walk into the server's box, show a little arrogance. <laughs> yeah, I meant that. No. Side out. Ashley looking over to... serves 12. Shorty Ruiz making eye contact as she walks back. Ooh. Coaching is illegal during the match, but uh, they look at each other, make eye contact, and they can telepathic. telepathically yeah. coach. <laughs> yeah, there's always great support for the Tucson players. Nice shot. And there it is, Ashley Moeller forcing a tiebreaker. You didn't know that when you sat into this booth here for game number two that you're going to actually sit in for two games. I didn't I'm forcing actually you, sign up for that. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm forcing you for the. <laughs> did I you realize? I don't think I agree to that. <laughs> did, we're, you're going to get paid the same no matter what happens. Yeah, I bet. And that payment is a compliment. Zero. <laughs> Did I'm waiting <laughs> for that compliment. It, it'll happen. I'll drop something in. <laughs> but have you looked at the men's semis and the women's semis? Ireland versus Tucson, Arizona. Ireland versus Tucson, Arizona. Oh, yeah. The men and the women. Wow. I actually didn't realize that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Definitely. This, these national championships used to be called the, the Irish Invitational. Uh, but now with Tucson's presence, uh, maybe it's a split tournament. Definitely. 
had to throw that out there. What's the, the next major event after this one? I know that you only think about the thing that you're currently doing and you don't think ahead because <laughs> this right here is your only focus. It's but called mindfulness. I'm living in the moment. <laughs> um, I guess back home we have the One World Nationals coming up. Mm. So we're going to give that a go. Okay. And then we'll be talking about like big alley season, so 60 right. by 30. And then I'll be looking forward to the next season of the tour. I yeah. see the dates were released. Today. Yeah, very exciting. So looking forward to getting back to Tucson well, our in November. Half sideline reporter, half color commentator, Max Lane Mack, who also went out and did some hockey this, this week here in Portland. So we have him. He did? Yeah, he did. I know. Here he is. Oh, my God. That's actually him. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Max. He said that he was in Ireland in 2017-18, and you gave a tour of oh, yeah. Croke Park and played 60 by 30. Yeah, and that, that was fun. He said that the lights came down and you guys were tied at like 16, but what was the real story? I don't remember. He said that it was a draw. Yeah, was he said it was nice. a draw, but deep down I have a feeling you were winning. <laughs> well, we were playing doubles. Oh, okay. Well, okay. he was definitely He knows what he's capable. doing out here. Yeah. Does he have a background in ice hockey? Uh, yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. He used to play as a junior player. I would be useless at that. I have a fear of ice skating. I don't think these people at the rink has ever seen a seven-footer <laughs> playing hockey before. Yeah, he looks very smooth out there. Yeah, this is the town for stuff like that, hockey and American soccer. I know that you're a multi-sport athlete yourself. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Here's a view of yeah, our Yeah, very cool. Oh, blimp. I didn't know there were tennis courts up there. I know. Now you want to go outside. Yes, I do. Wait, that's one tennis court. And what's the other one? It could, well, it could be pickleball. but Okay. Wow. Isn't it interesting that... Uh, in order to get all that green, it has to rain a lot. Yeah. So, you know, it's you take the good with the bad. You look at that and you say, well, look how beautiful Portland is. It's all nice and green. That is a nice view. We flew the drone and are currently flying the drone only in the times when it's not raining. That's why you've seen it only twice during this live broadcast. <laughs> but, you know, I've been here for a few days. I It never rained. I never, I mean, just little drops. Yeah, just today. It's actually. not been bad, really. No. And we're ready for the tiebreaker here. Yeah, we're going to go to 11 points. Ashley gets that serve to start it off because she breaker, had the most Ashley points. Serves. Yeah, just zero serves, zero. right? Maybe 14, No, no like 12. six. I think she was up yeah. by six yeah, because she got 14 she the first 14, time. 12. And Fiona had, oh, okay, so 12. it was 12. Okay. Yeah. Zero, zero. It definitely helps to have the first serve. Should be a battle. One zero. Side out. Zero one. Well, dog out. together at one. One serves one. Point. Two serves one. Tiebreakers are nerve-wracking, aren't they? They are. To watch and to play in. Yeah. Sometimes watching is like the Worse. most tense yeah. thing that you could ever see. You know, nothing worse than when you're playing is when you jump out in a tiebreaker to a nice lead, you know, 6-0, something like that. <laughs> and you say, well, I'm just five away. 
and then your opponent starts scoring points, and then it becomes very, very intense. Yeah. And everything tightens up, and it's like. Two serves, two. It's very interesting also with the way that this match has happened. Fiona had that really big, comfortable lead in game number one. Nice and catch. side out. And the last half of game number one, Ashley sort of figured something out. Two and she implemented two. that in game number two and had a really big lead in game number two. And it was like Fiona sort of figured things out. Yes. So what, what's going to happen in the I break here? And I guess two to two is about right. right it definitely shapes up. For you get this feeling that it's going to be like this all the way to the end. Nip and tuck. Two serves two. And we have some glass pounders here. I know. Doug is a very passionate supporter. <laughs> I'm not so certain. Three, I think this flies in Tucson. It doesn't fly here. But yeah, he might get kicked out. <laughs> he might be escorted from the building. Nice get. That's a nice oh, shot. Yeah. See, in Tucson, there'd be glass pounding after that shot. I and know, it would be they, equal. They, See, yeah. here it's not. It's only Here it's 100% one way. That's where I'm saying it doesn't fly here. I feel like Fiona's uh, supporters are very chilled, <laughs> not too vocal. We're all together at three. Three, three. Oof. Don't see too many aces on a lob serve. Yeah. But this is the Four, time to pull three. one out. Short. Second. Point. Those are Five, great shots three. there. That ball coming off the back wall, coming to the side wall. That's also tough. Yeah. The side advertising over there. And again. Point. We've seen Ashley fight some of those off, and she's going to call a tie break, uh, timeout here in the tiebreaker. Yeah, that's a good lead for Fiona now. Six to three, Fiona finds herself up. Watching the USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships number 71. Of those 71, you've won five. <laughs> so. That's not really that good, is it? <laughs> well, you were only alive for, let's say, I don't know, 25. 26. Probably 26, yeah. Of those. <laughs> I always say that up until about three, you didn't know anything either, either way, you know? So you just don't count those three years. <laughs> I'm not talking for you specifically. I'm just meaning me. <laughs> just the general you. Okay, time is in. Six serves three. You know, there's one thing about having that good serve down the left wall. And you say, well, that's all I Seven, need to do. Three. But a lot of these players just don't have it. It's not part of something that they've ever practiced. So you don't see them consistently hitting it in the same spot every time. Yeah. You get the Tony Healy's and the Dave Chapman's that would go in and Side specifically out. practice this one shot to where it would always bounce on the same, you know, you'd make yeah. minor adjustments. You wouldn't miss by clipping the side wall up high and having it come all the way across the court. They would miss by inches. Ooh, Look how good that tough. shot is. And Ashley hit that one backwards. Side out. That's how tough that ball was. But you see what I'm saying? You can say one time you serve it and it's good, but the next time you serve it and you don't even come in the ballpark. Seven serves three. Yeah. It's like you might want to come in and practice this one serve. Side out. Oh, great shot. Three, seven. Flying the return there. Underhand paddle variety. It's a chance. Nice. Down. Point. Four, 
four seven. Oh, she had Fiona going the wrong way. Yeah, great serve. Fiona did well to get it back. Out. Ashley took the wrong angle there. She would have kind of clipped Fiona, got a little closer to her. She would have been Seven able to four. get to that. Her first step was back. Seven to four. In your ball. Replay seven four. It's been a fairly long match, too. Yeah. The ball sound like a broke. Okay. Fiona hit it so hard. Just died there. It was a four seven. Defense. Oh, look at that. A diving fist shot. Great Muller shot. goes down on one knee and smacks that with her fist Five, one inch high seven. off the front wall. It's a little laser. Real shot. It's a chance. Oh no. Side out. That was a, a loud service for Ashley. Seven five. The, the scoreboard didn't change. Oh, oh, it is five. Oh, it is five. Now it did change. <laughs> I thought she got that as a side out. Delayed reaction. I wasn't putting down From our you. No, scoreboard you. guy. Yeah. Side out. Another side out here, five to seven. You're doing something kind of unique in this tournament. I Your am. first round opponent scored zero and Five, two. Seven. Stop it. Just and your second care. round scored That's zero and irrelevant. two. It is not. It is not don't you like course. symmetry? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Side out. It's just a side out. Tough to take. Though. Seven and five. Fiona had to fight that off, and she does so right in the left corner. Good serve. Point. That is a great serve. Yeah, it came off at the right angle. Eight, five. Can't miss those. Those are tough, though, the way they, they drop off the back wall. I don't think anyone likes that shot. Nine, five. Fiona two points away now from going into the finals to face somebody who is not very symmetrical in the way <laughs> she looks at life, Point. <laughs> like I do. Unsymmetrical, anti-symmetrical. Asymmetrical, right? Ten serve five. I don't think so. It is. I don't know what it is. Okay, but. match point. Gonna be tough. Gonna be tough. And point she does is. it. Fiona takes down Ashley Muller. Nice it was match, a tough please. fought battle. But it was won by Fiona Tolley. She wins 21 to 14, loses game number two, 12 to 21, and then in game three, it was 11 to five. What adjustments did she make there? She seemed like she put more pressure on Ashley in game number three. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Played aggressively. But it seemed like she was the fresher one out there as well. Yeah. She was popping the ball hard, doing... You know, basically what we thought she would do when she stepped into the court for the first serve. Just seemed like she was uh, hitting the ball hard, being aggressive, putting the ball in the deep court. Yeah, she didn't really make any mistakes there in the tiebreaker either. So you're not only in the women's singles, but you're also in the women's doubles. Correct. And do, do yeah, you have a match Fiona tonight? Yeah, my partner. Right. No, we actually don't play until tomorrow afternoon, so okay. after the singles. Yeah. So it's so day off for you. hopefully we won't wear each other out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be bad. So you're going to make her play the left? <laughs> <laughs> make her? No, the doubles is after. Oh, okay. All so. right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We, we actually haven't discussed. But if you did, let's just let's where. just guess that you had to play, let's say, a semifinals like oh, today. Oh, she would so be on the left. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, we're going to say goodbye for the day. Okay, bye-bye. But I knew you would do that. I knew you would. Oh, also, <laughs> if my... If my
my family are still watching at home, I want to Go wish to bed. my, um, my to dad a happy birthday. How, how young is your dad? He is very young. I couldn't possibly say. It's okay to say a guy's podcast. age. <laughs> you can say a guy's age on... 21. Oh, wow. <laughs> So he had you five years before he was born. He did. He's a very special man. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Dan. K- Katrina, Katrina's dad, Dan. Dan Casey. You we have met a, Dan. We love him. We're going to say goodbye for today. My name is Dave Vincent. I want to thank uh, <laughs> Katrina Casey for being in the broadcast booth. Oh, thank you. Jeff Kastner, Jay Lowenstein, Chris Grad, Kara Mack, Linda Manning, Matt Kruger with the United States Handball Association, the MAC, the Multnomah Athletic Club, and the show court sponsor, Mortgage Solutions Financial. I want to thank those that have helped out with this live broadcast and those uh, that are putting on and allowing this to happen with the United States Handball Association and World Players of Handball. You have a great rest of your evening. We'll see you tomorrow, which is a Saturday for the women's and men's finals, plus more handball action here on YouTube with the World Players of Handball and the United States Handball Association. Have a great Saturday and Friday, Saturday morning, Friday night. And happy birthday.